Good morning and welcome back. We will now continue with the general debate. I would like to remind the speakers of the time allocated, which is three minutes for member states and one and a half minutes for observers. To ensure the smooth running of this meeting, I would also like to request that all those taking the floor speak at a reasonable pace to allow accurate interpretation, in particular if delegates are participating online. In all cases, to ensure accurate and clear interpretation, copies of all statements should be submitted in advance by all delegations to the meeting secretariat before the opening of the relevant morning or afternoon session. Please also note that the full text of statements given to the secretariat will then also be published on the IOM website, unless the meeting secretariat advise otherwise. And I now invite a statement from member states. Please, the floor with the distinguished representative of China. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so nice to see you and the DG and your team here. At the outset, I'd like to congratulate you and other members of the Bureau to take up this important position. And I wish to see the, the Director General every success in your uh, first Council session. China commands IOM's continuous efforts on the budget and the governance framework reform and the protection of international migrants and the global migration uh, migration governance. I wish to share with you the following points. Firstly, we need to focus on the road courses. The international community must forge a stronger consensus on development as the primary task and work together to speed up economic recovery so as to build a solid material foundation for dealing with migration issues. We hope that all relevant parties will stick to the direction of seeking political settlement of conflicts and disputes to promote reconstruction and reconciliation and to reduce large-scale irregular movements of the population. We believe that all parties should carry out robust cooperation under the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and jointly respond to the issue of migrations in a proper manner. <clears throat> Otherwise, it will affect it, including those affected by the climate change. Second, protect le the legitimate right of mi migrants. We welcome foreign migrants to blend in with local communities and to yield productivity dividends. We advocate the trans national law enforcement security cooperation for facilitating the safe, orderly, and the regular migration and handling properly irregular migration. We stand firmly against illegal smuggling and human trafficking and oppose any stigmatization, racial discrimination, and hatred. Third, upgrade migration services by emerging technologies. We look forward to rapid strategic response by scientific forecasting of population migration trend, effective improvement of identification capabilities, and optimizing employment through data-driven algorithm by using emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and big data. Fourth, enhance international cooperation on migration. We welcome all member states to implement the global compact on migration in accordance with their national situations. We reiterate that the developed countries uh, need to deliver on their commitment, including the official development assistance. We welcome IOM to increase assistance support and capacity building for developing countries through its uh, process of reform and uh, further improve the uh, representation of developing countries in the whole structure. 
Mr. Chairman, China has always been committed to migration issues. We will continue to firmly support IOM under the leadership of the Director General by making our due contribution to global migration governance and contribute to build a community with a shared future for us all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Please, the floor to the distinguished representative of Yemen. Thank you, Chairperson. My delegation associates itself with the statement made by the Arab Group and Asia Pacific Group. Allow me first to congratulate you in your election as second vice chair of the 114th session of the Council, wishing you every success. We also reiterate our congratulation to Ms. Amy Bob for the exception of the office of the IOM Director General. We can assure you, Madam Digi, uh, Yemen full support to make IOM innovative, dynamic, diverse, and fit for purpose. We are confident your vision will steer the IOM towards achieving our common goals. One objective, mainly protecting the migrants on the move. We thank you for your report. With Chair Besson, uh, Yemen has been at war for nine years. A destructive war imposed by the Houthi militia, which led to a total economic collapse and an unprecedented humanitarian, humanitarian for the issues. This appalling war has, has caused the displacement of over five million people uh, living in a difficult humanitarian uh, conditions. Uh, migration flows and the issues surrounding them remain a, co remain a concern uh, for Yemen, which is a country of departure and transit, destination and return. Reports indicate the, indicate the number of migrants it's crossing the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden is constantly increasing. These migrants often find themselves recruited by the Houthi militia and exploited by the armed groups and smuggling gangs. The Republic of Yemen highly appreciates IOM to elevate the suffering of migrants and displaced persons and looks forward to strengthening its support to the Yemeni government to ensure protections and shelter for migrants in transit. The Yemeni government also hopes to relaunch the voluntary humanitarian return, VHR, by OM, for migrants wishing to return to their country of origin. Mr. Chairperson, in conclusion, Yemen is going, Yemen is, is, in, is in humanitarian and crisis. It's requiring special attention by IOM to help fulfill its obligation and duties it's for the refugees and migrants on the move in a way that preserve their rights, humanity, and dignity. Uh, Yemen also reaffirm its commitment and willingness to cooperate with IOM and its member state to find a durable solution to the migrants it's causes facing, facing the world. I uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. And please, the floor now with Tunisia. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Madame la Directrice Générale, la Tunisie s'associe aux déclarations au nom des groupes africains et arabes. Et elle est honorée d'avoir été élue au début de cette session en tant que rapporteur du bureau du Conseil de notre organisation. Ceci procède de la volonté de mon pays de contribuer positivement aux efforts internationaux en matière de migration et témoigne de notre engagement continu auprès de l'OIM en tant que principale agence onusienne chargée de cette question. 
Je remercie Madame la directrice générale pour la présentation de son rapport sur les activités de l'OIM en 2023 et réitère notre soutien aux orientations futures qui y sont dessinées. Madame la directrice générale, nous avons en particulier pris note des actions pré préliminaires entreprises par l'OIM pour répondre à l'urgence humanitaire à Gaza. Nous soulignons la nécessité pour l'OIM de renforcer ces actions et de donner la priorité aux projets et activités visant à soutenir le peuple palestinien, et en particulier à Gaza, qui subit un massacre inédit, avec plus de 20 000 victimes et un déplacement forcé de 1,8 million de personnes. Cette situation inhumaine provoquée par la force d'occupation et ces crimes de guerre commis contre une population assiégée, assoiffée, affamée, requiert aujourd'hui une action internationale commune de la part des États, mais aussi des organisations internationales humanitaires. Madame la Présidente, Monsieur le Président, nous saisissons l'occasion de ce Conseil pour réaffirmer la conviction profonde de la Tunisie que la migration doit demeurer un choix et que lorsqu'elle est légale et ordonnée, elle est génératrice de richesses et elle devient un levier de développement et d'interculturalité. C'est dans ce cadre que la Tunisie prend l'adoption d'une approche globale fondée sur le renforcement des voies de migration légale et la lutte contre la migration illégale en s'attaquant aux causes profondes de ce fléau. Soucieuse de jouer un rôle constructif dans l'élaboration de solutions globales, mon pays a lancé en juillet 2023 avec l'Italie le processus de Rome. Cette initiative, rejointe par 21 pays, défend une approche systémique qui promeut le développement économique dans les pays d'origine et place la migration légale au cœur de la réflexion. La Tunisie abritera le deuxième, la deuxième réunion de, de haut niveau de ce processus prochainement. Elle a également signé le 16 juillet dernier un partenariat global et stratégique avec la partie européenne dans lequel la migration légale a été érigée en priorité commune, notamment à travers la mise en place d'un partenariat pour les talents. Mon pays compte également sur le soutien continu de l'OIM pour accompagner ces efforts visant à la pleine application du pacte mondial sur l'immigration, en particulier en faveur de l'objectif 1 sur la collecte et l'utilisation de données précises à travers la fourniture de l'assistance nécessaire pour la généralisation de projets pilotes relatifs à la digitalisation des services administratifs fournis, fournis aux étrangers. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair, Madam Dir Director General, distinguished delegates. Greece aligns itself with the statement made by the European Union. The current session of the IOM Council is being held at a critical international juncture. Geopolitical tensions and conflicts, particularly Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine and the tragic conflict in Gaza following the appalling ter terrorist attack by Hamas on 7th October, have aggravated the global humanitarian landscape, which is already facing the generational challenge of climate change. Madam Director General, firstly, allow me to express our sincere congratulations since the first IOM Council of your mandate. We believe that under your leadership, IOM will develop new impetus and strengthen its global footprint. Greece fully supports the key priorities you presented to the member states, particularly climate change and human mobility, legal pathways, and promoting partnerships. In 2022 and 2023, the number of displaced people due to climate-related disasters and environmental degradation has reached a record high. Our neighborhood, the broader Mediterranean area, is one of the most severely affected by the climate crisis and the increasingly savage natural disasters it entails. The global climate crisis requires immediate action and response at all levels, global, regional, and local. Greece is proud as a member of the EU to have undertaken a legally binding commitment to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. However, we should also focus urgently on climate mitigation and adaptation measures and resilience building in the most vulnerable regions and communities globally.
Climate change is one of the six key priority areas of Greece in the framework of its candidacy as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council for the period 25-26. Key pillars of Greece's migration policy are preventing irregular migration, dismantling smuggling networks, and improving the effectiveness of return systems in a safe, orderly, and dignified manner. This is underpinned by a policy undertaken together with our EU partners of support to the economic development and climate adaptation in the countries of origin. We need to reinforce this approach, more development, greater resi re resilience, legal pathways, and a whole of root approach are our primary tools for mitigating the humanitarian consequences of climate change. We would like to particularly emphasize the need for a whole of route approach by raising also awareness of the risks stemming from smuggling routes. However, we remain strong advocates of promoting legal pathways to mobility, including through bilateral labor agreements. We will continue our long-standing and solid partnership with IOM and will fully support the common efforts of the organization to face our common challenges in a spirit of solidarity. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Please, the floor to the distinguished representative of Portugal. Thank you, Chair, Director General. Portugal aligns with the European Union statement. Today, we face increasingly complex and multiplying challenges. Conflict, adverse social economic conditions, political instability, and climate change all impact human mobility and all lead to increased numbers of people on the move. The war of Russia against Ukraine caused a massive number of forcibly displaced people within the country and beyond. Portugal is proud of sheltering close to 60,000 people, most of them women and children who had to flee Ukraine. Following the horrific terrorist attacks of Hamas on Israel, which we condemned in the strongest terms, the destruction of infrastructure in Gaza and the resulting unprecedented humanitarian crisis led to the forced displacement of over 1.6 million people in less than two months. We hope the current truce can ultimately lead to a ceasefire, the liberation of all hostages, and open the prospect for a political solution to the conflict, which is the only way to long-term peace. But conflicts in Afghanistan, Sudan, South Sudan, and Syria still rage and force millions into displacement. Meanwhile, climate change is creating or worsening conflicts and forcing people to move, especially in countries of the global south and siege. Lives and livelihoods, particularly of the poorest and most vulnerable, which are disproportionately women, are threatened by more frequent and extreme weather events. All this makes the nexus between human mobility and environmental challenges and other structural factors that compel people to leave their places of origin more important than ever. As champion country, Portugal is engaged and committed to the GCM. The Portuguese strategic cooperation program reflects our engagement. Some examples, we are strengthening the resilience of communities to natural disasters through prevention, risk management, and disaster responses in line with the Sendai framework. With the SOF initiative, we support the WMO's work in Guinea-Bissau for early warning in the Atlantic region. We are installing smart submarine cables along the Northeast Atlantic to provide early warning of seismic and tsunami events and to monitor climate change and its effect on sea level. We signed a landmark debt swapped agreement with Cape Verde for investments in environmental and climate initiatives. Chair, safe, orderly and regular migration ought to be a central feature in our countries. This is why establishing legal pathways anchored in human rights is so important. This requires comprehensive, coordinated and concerted global solutions. And it implies a whole of society and whole of root approach with the participation of migrants, forcibly displaced people and refugees. Portugal has negotiated labor mobility agreements and social security agreements with countries in Europe, Africa and Asia, and we promote positive narratives on migration. Nevertheless, discrimination and bias are still a concern, so legal reforms were approved to combat racism and discrimination. These are reflected in our GCM national implementation plan. We hope that the COP28 and GRF will strengthen our determination to find together integration solutions. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Please, the floor with the distinguished representative of Mozambique. Chairperson, Madam Director General, ladies, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Mozambique delegation, let me start by congratulating Ambassador Katarina Stash 
from Germany and all members of the Bureau for their election and for the excellent manner in which are leading our session. At the same time, my delegation warmly welcomes and congratulates our new and first woman IUM Director General, Madame Amy Pope, wishing her every success in her mandate. We appreciate her vision, approach, and priorities focused on assistance to people most in need. We also applaud the Director General's strategic vision and policy priorities concerning the need to find new pathways for an orderly, safe, and regular migration, the need to find sustainable solutions for human mobility caused by climate change. Madam Director General, you can count on Mozambique full support. Chair, Mozambique aligns itself with the statement delivered by Rwanda on behalf of the African group. We take note of the Director General report and we commend the progress made and we recognize the current challenges facing our organization, OEM. We encourage the current reform process in view of a better efficiency of the work of our organization. As referred by the Director General in a report, this meeting takes place at a critical moment characterized by multiple crises such as the impact of climate change on human mobility, war and conflicts in different parts of the world, contributing to an increased number of migrations, flows and forced displacement. With profound appreciation and recognition, my delegation highlights the efforts of AEM in supporting Mozambique to face challenges of human mobility caused by effects of natural disasters such as cyclones, floods, which is becoming more and more frequent due to climate change and the attacks from terrorist groups in northern province of Cabo Delgado. The UEM and its country team in Mozambique played and is still playing a vital role in assisting and restoring hope for over 800,000 Mozambicans forcibly displaced. OEM presence in the country and these proactive actions significantly contributes to the stabilization of communities facing situation of this deep distress. Chair, before I conclude, let me reiterate the commitment of the government of the Republic of Mozambique to continue to cooperate, work and support the OEM to ensure an orderly, safe and regular migration as a catalyst for peace and prosperity of all people of the world. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Please the floor with the distinguished representative of Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The delegation of Nigerian aligns with the statement delivered by the Republic of Rwanda and Zimbabwe on behalf of the African group. My delegation welcomes the Director General, DG of the International Organization for Migration, Mrs. Amy Pope, to our first council session and congratulate Her Excellency Ambassador Katharina Stash on her election as chairperson of the IOM Council. Similarly, we commend His Excellency Ambassador Lansana Gabriel for his stellar chairmanship of the council in the past years and join other delegations to commend outgoing members of the Bureau while congratulating the newly elected members. Nigeria recognizes the multifaceted landscape of migration and its far-reaching consequences for individuals as well as states. Migration can no doubt foster economic growth, cultural exchange, and innovation, but it also presents certain inherent challenges, particularly for those forced to leave their homes due to conflict or natural disasters. African migrants continue to face various challenges during their migratory journey, even when it is done through regular pathways. They are quite often ridiculed, mistreated, 
and become victims of racial discrimination and, and xenophobia at various parts of entry in destination countries. This unnecessary display of prejudice in often, is often exacerbated in cases of individuals involved in irregular migration who may be feeling persecution and uh, persecution. Objective 11 of the Global Compact for Safe and Orderly Migration calls for collaboration among states and border management to ensure the security of migrants, encourage regular border crossing, taking into consideration the humane treatment of the migrants regardless of their migratory status. And there are calls for member states to honor this principle by promoting and protecting the human rights of all migrants. IOM has disclosed that 87% of migration in Africa occurs within the continent. Another, uh, nevertheless, a smaller percentage of young and highly skilled persons, including Nigerians migrating to other countries, often experience challenges with non-recognition of skills and qualifications in countries of destination. It is therefore imperative that this council take note of this German impediment and begin to work on a durable solution to bridge the gap. We seize this opportunity to urge member states to reflect on ensuring the adaptation of migration policies that promote complementary pathways for regular migrants. As a GCM champion country, Nigeria is certainly committed to implementing the objectives of the compact. It is in this context that the review of our 2015 national migration policy is being conducted with the active support of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to integrate the, the objectives, GCM and other relevant national, regional and international processes and recommendations. Furthermore, Nigeria was recently inducted into the steering committee of the Euro-African Dialogue of Migration and Development, also known as the Rabat Process, a governing body that identifies strategic priorities and making pertinent decisions to advance the objectives of the dialogue. In our first major activity, Nigeria co-chaired, alongside the Netherlands, a thematic meeting on migration youth and development to address several cross-cutting and emerging issues, including thematic issues related to brain drain, brain gain, knowledge transfer, circular migration, education, and innovation. In the onus effort, in the erroneous effort to address the menace of human trafficking, Nigeria adopted a national action plan to address its five critical thematic areas namely protection and assistance, prevention, research and assessment, prosecutions, and partnership in coordination and coordination. Similarly, a framework has, been, has also been established to ensure the return, readmission, and reintegration of vulnerable migrants by ensuring the inclusion of these identified individuals in socio-economic intervention programs. On diaspora engagement, the private sector in Nigeria, with the full support of the government recently, organized the sixth Nigerian Diaspora Investment Summit, anchored on fostering economic prosperity by leveraging diaspora expertise, resources, and network for national development. This approach is indeed instrumental to facilitating the transfer of skills and knowledge to local communities. As I conclude, my delegation recalls the principles of the GCM to strengthen international cooperation and global partnerships relevant to migration issues and calls on member states to commit to promoting safe, orderly, and regular migration worldwide. Nigeria reiterates its commitment to the execution of its mandate for people on the move. I thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have finished the first uh, 
block of speakers, and now is, uh, I will, we will hear the Director General's comments, please. Thank you very much. Um, I want to start first with China and to acknowledge your commitment to addressing development issues, which we know are ultimately at the root of uh, much of migration that is happening around the world, particularly through irregular channels. And I want to congratulate China for hosting the Regional Migration Governance High Level Forum in June, which is something we were very, very pleased to support. And we look forward to working with your immigration and law enforcement authorities in China and across the region. We want to commend the work you've done with ASEAN member states and the recent announcement of the Regional Cooperation Roadmap to end address transnational organized crime and trafficking in persons and recognize the work that you're doing to um, counter that particular issue, which we know um, is, is at the causes the exploitation of many, many people around the world. Um, to the government of Yemen, I want to recognize that um, you are facing significant challenges with the number of migrants who are coming through your country, particularly en route to the Gulf states. And we appreciate the work that you're doing to collaborate so that we can enhance migration governance across the region, including through the implementation of a global compact on migration. We appreciate the support that you have brought along with the government of Ethiopia to facilitate the voluntary humanitarian return of many migrants who have been stranded along the route. And we appreciate the, the ongoing collaboration as well as provide assistance to those who are internally displaced within your country. To the government of Tunisia, tout d'abord, je vous remercie pour votre engagement avec les conseils. And it's very much a pleasure to have you on the leadership um, as our rapporteur. But uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the tremendous work that we're doing with your government, particularly in the face of a high number of migrants that have been coming through your country. We know that we are working on a broad range of issues including immigration and border governance, engaging your diaspora, empowering youth, um, identifying and providing assistance to migrants who are in your country, and in some cases, helping those migrants to get home when they don't have any pathway. But we particularly welcome the work that you're doing to identify regular pathways for persons, including labor opportunities, recognizing the importance of not contributing to brain drain in your country, um, even as we establish those better pathways for, for people around the world. I'd like to commend the government of Greece for its work to support meaningful and holistic integration of beneficiaries um, uh, of international protection in your country, recognizing that you've played a tremendous role uh, really over the last decade in that regard. And we look forward to working more closely with you to scale up more regular pathways, more legal migration for persons who are responding to the labor market needs in Greece itself. Um, we know that there are emerging opportunities. We are seeing um, your government's commitment to seizing those opportunities and making migration work for all people. And I want to recognize that Greece has recently established the position of a fundamental rights officer, which is a model that we would encourage other um, countries around the world to adopt. And we stand ready to continue to provide support to you and to your government. I'd like to recognize the government of Portugal, which as a champion country for the Global Compact for Safe, Regular, and Orderly Migration, continues to stand out, both in terms of the humanitarian and protection efforts that you have brought, including during the recent Ukrainian crisis, where more than 52,000 people have sought protection in Portugal. And we continue to stand ready to support your government in those efforts um, as you provide hospitality, um, access to health, education, employment, and housing to uh, vulnerable migrants and refugees. And we also recognize and acknowledge the work that Portugal is doing to expand access to regular pathways and to recognize the work you've already done to establish regular access to pathways, including through circular migration. Uh, and we want to make sure that we are um, acknowledging all the work you're doing to build climate resilience, um, not just for the people of Portugal, but for people around the world. Thank you very much. Um, and to Mozambique, uh, the work you are doing in Mozambique to identify, address, build resilience to the impact of climate change for your nationals 
is uh, something to be commended. And we want to recognize, particularly within the Southern Africa region, you have provided real leadership on the issue of disaster management through the Southern African Development Communities Humanitarian and Emergency Operations Center, which is something that will have impact on more than just your country. So we appreciate that. And we want to show, to, to really highlight the work that you are leading to ensure a more just energy transition through your own strategy and ensuring that, that Mozambique leads the way to uh, a better, more efficient, more effective use of energy. And I'd like to recognize the work that you're doing in putting together a comprehensive migration policy for your country with the development of the migration profiles. That's something that we are very committed to working with you to achieve. And finally, to uh, Nigeria, I'd like to welcome you here to, um, to Geneva and to recognize that you've come a long way. We're very pleased to see you here in person. And also to welcome the work that you're doing in Nigeria to review your national migration policy, which is now um, almost 10 years old, and appreciate the work that you're doing to reevaluate what are the key priorities of your nationals and the migrants who are passing through Nigeria. We recognize your leadership in the region and particularly note that you are a prime beneficiary of the demographic dividend that we are seeing across the continent. So the work we're doing to engage young people, to identify more regular pathways, to address climate change, to alleviate poverty, um, and to respond to um, the, the real challenges of um, extremism, trafficking, and smuggling. It's all work that we are very committed to doing hand in hand with you. So we thank you very much for your leadership in the region and globally. Thank you very much, DG. Let's start now with the second block of speaker of this morning. And I would like to remind delegations that the statements from member states are limited to three minutes. Please, the floor now with the distinguished representative of Costa Rica. Muchas gracias, señor presidente, y un gusto verlo presidir nuestros trabajos y sirva esta ocasión también a través suyo felicitar a todo el buró por su designación para presidir nuestros trabajos que sé que serán muy fructuosos. Para iniciar, Costa Rica desea adherirse a la declaración realizada por Argentina en nombre del GRULAC. Agradecemos también a la directora general por la presentación de su informe y aprovechamos para extender el agradecimiento a todo el personal de la OIM, quienes ejercen sus labores con mística y compromiso muchas veces en situaciones de alta peligrosidad. Señor presidente, el mundo está viviendo situaciones de guerra, de inestabilidad política, pérdida de gobernabilidad democrática y patrones de violación sistemática de los derechos humanos y libertades fundamentales. Y si no, como si esto no fuera poco, eh, seguimos enfrentando la triple crisis eh, climática con la polución, la crisis del clima y la pérdida de biodiversidad, lo que provocan aún más eh, una mayor movilidad y desplazamiento de personas. Históricamente, Costa Rica ha sido y sigue siendo un país de acogida para personas migrantes y refugiadas. En este sentido, los pasados años han sido particularmente difíciles para nuestra región. Hoy en día, mi país está enfrentando un aumento desmesurado del tránsito de personas de la región y extrarregionales en movimientos mixtos hacia el norte del continente, así como una gran cantidad de personas que buscan protección por medio del Instituto del Refugio en mi país. Pero a pesar de los esfuerzos de Costa Rica, ya sea a nivel local o a nivel nacional, las necesidades sobrepasan nuestra capacidad de respuesta. Por esa razón, el sistema de Naciones Unidas presente en el país juega un rol fundamental en el manejo correcto de estos flujos mixtos. 
la cooperación estrecha entre la OIM y el ACNUR es fundamental para poder atender a esta población de manera correcta y para poder cumplir con nuestras obligaciones bajo el Pacto Global sobre Refugiados y el Pacto Global para una Migración Regular, Segura y Ordenada. Con la colaboración de la OIM hemos avanzado en el desarrollo e implementación de nuevas rutas de regularización migratoria. Por ejemplo, hemos creado nuevas categorías especiales para trabajadores agrícolas, para personas provenientes de Cuba, Nicaragua y Venezuela, cuyas solicitudes de refugio no han, han sido denegadas o están en proceso de estudio. Asimismo, hemos mejorado la comunicación interinstitucional para desarrollar sistemas digitales y de simplificación de trámites para la regularización de trabajadores migrantes. Y es que Costa Rica es un país que cree firmemente en la fuerza del multilateralismo y la cooperación internacional. Si queremos hacer frente a las grandes crisis que estamos viviendo, no podemos hacerlo sin colaborar entre nosotros. Las necesidades de la población en movilidad deben de ser abordadas tanto por los países de origen, tránsito y destino. Hay sin lugar a dudas una responsabilidad compartida que debe ser reconocida por la comunidad internacional. En este sentido, un ejemplo que hemos llevado a, a bien es un, un, eh, eh, que en conjunto con Estados Unidos eh, hemos establecido oficinas de movilidad segura que permiten a personas que buscan refugio o migrar a Estados Unidos lo hagan de, de una manera segura y regular desde Costa Rica. Estamos actualmente en discusiones con España y Canadá para replicar estas prácticas. Pero para ser eficaces debemos reconocer que no podemos seguir administrando tragedias y pasar a una visión de desarrollo en los países de origen al mismo tiempo que les pidamos a los países que atraen a los migrantes, eh, principalmente los países del norte, Estados Unidos o Canadá, para que transparenten sus ofertas de empleo para promover una movilidad regular, ordenada y segura y hacer de la migración un win-win game. Para finalizar, este, quiero apro aprovechar esta oportunidad para felicitar a El Salvador y a Marruecos al asumir la copresidencia de la Iniciativa de Campeones del Pacto Global sobre Migraciones y agradecemos las labores realizadas al día de hoy y confirmamos el apoyo de Costa Rica para continuar promoviendo el cumplimiento del pacto. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Muchas gracias. Please the floor to Vanuatu. Thank you, Chair. We thank the Director General for her comprehensive report, and we welcome the program and budget for the year 2024. My delegation welcomes the growth of the organization in terms of budget and planning, as reflected on the strategic plan for the 2024-2028 cycle. The report shows the efforts of the IOM to achieve its objectives, such a renewed engagement with a variety of stakeholders to find the new solutions to actively respond to the multiple crises of our days, protecting people on the move, providing life-saving humanitarian assistance during armed conflicts, finding solutions to displacement, in particular on climate migration responses. Vanuatu, as a small island developing state, is at the front line against the negative impacts of climate change. This emergency poses a significant threat to our Pacific shores. In 2023, Vanuatu was hit by three Category 4 cyclones, the first of which occurring just two days apart from each other, affecting over 66% of our population. These events magnify our natural and social economic vulnerability, putting our resilience and adaptive capacity to the test. Our life is in danger. So this is why we seek to set high expectations by underscoring the critical need for budget allocation and solution towards addressing climate change. Climate change and resilience was one of the key points of the discussion at the 52nd Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Meeting held in the Cook Islands at the beginning of this month. Pacific leaders endorsed the Pacific Regional Framework on Climate Mobility 
a Pacific Partnership for Prosperity. The framework is a global first that aims to provide practical guidance to governments planning for and managing climate mobility while also respecting members' national laws and policies. My delegation also warmly welcomes Australian government's commitment to strengthen climate and disaster re resilience in the Pacific, in particular to provide climate, economic and security assistance as a concrete support to the government of Tuvalu. This is why today we reiterate the importance of prioritizing funding for climate change related issues, including the displacement of people, disaster risk management and labor mobility. We appreciate the continued support from your efforts in enhancing resilience in our region through various programs and we specifically acknowledge the recently approved program on IOM Development Fund 2023 project, strengthening states' capacities and enhancing community awareness to prevent and respond to online and technology facilitating trafficking in person in Fiji and Vanuatu. This project will help our government to enhance the capacities of law enforcement agencies in addressing cybercrime, particularly online and technology facilitating trafficking. In conclusion, Vanuatu wishes to express its utmost appreciation to you, Madam DG, for your unwavering commitment to the Pacific region since assuming your role. We look forward to continuing our constructive engagement with the IOM as we progress further in our shared interest, which is the well-being of our people. I thank you. Thank you very much. Please the floor with the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka. Mr. Chair, Madam Director General, Excellencies, at the outset, let me congratulate DG Amy Pope and express my delegation's appreciation for the consultations with member states since she assumed office in October to identify organizational priorities for 2024 to 2028. We welcome the importance attached by IOM to saving lives and protecting those forced to move, seeking solutions for displacement, particularly due to climate change, and recognition of the need to facilitate and increase regular migration pathways. We appreciate IOM's efforts to enhance the flexibility and accessibility of safe, orderly, and regular migration pathways, as well as to support development and implementation of interstate cooperation agreements to improve regular migration. We also appreciate the efforts to find solutions to the narrowing regular pathways for people from developing countries through enhancing and matching of skills, training and education, private sector engagement, and use of data to balance global labor shortages. In 2023, temperatures hit record highs with millions displaced due to storms, floods, wildfires, and drought. The selection of climate impact on human mobility, a global call for solutions as a theme for the high-level segment of this council meeting was timely, as it enabled discussion towards durable solutions at national and regional levels in the lead up to the 20th Conference of Parties to the UNFCCC this month. While we welcome the signing of the expanded Kampala Ministerial Declaration on Migration, Environment and Climate Change at the Africa Climate Summit 2023 in September, as well as the Pacific Regional Framework on Climate Mobility at the 52nd Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Meeting in November, more action is needed. Sri Lanka is among the top 10 climate-affected countries, yet with a rich biodiversity, industries and services, dependent on ecosystems. At COP27, Sri Lanka proposed establishing an international climate change research university in Sri Lanka to support green and blue studies. This would provide the opportunity for research, policy, and advocacy related to climate change to advance the capacity of vulnerable countries to address challenges and develop climate smart approaches to ensure sustainable development. The IOM's work towards putting in place practical policy solutions to manage the impact of climate change is therefore welcome. The report by the IOM Global Data Institute on Climate Change and Human Mobility, Quantitative Evidence on Global Historical Trends and Future Projections, 
further contributes towards achieving this objective. It is through collective action that we can reduce emissions and tackle the climate crisis to protect lives and livelihoods. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, the floor to the distinguished representative of Mexico. Señor Vicepresidente, México lo felicita por su elección como vicepresidente del Consejo y agradece a la directora general por su informe. También nos sumamos a la declaración pronunciada por Argentina en nombre del GRULAC. El 2023 ha sido nuevamente un año de grandes retos en la agenda migratoria. La profundización de las causas que dan pie a la migración ha llevado a un mayor número de personas a movilizarse a través de las fronteras internacionales. Sin embargo, la falta de canales para la migración regular obliga a estas personas a emplear rutas inseguras que ponen en riesgo el disfrute de los derechos humanos. Adicionalmente, vemos con preocupación la persistencia de un discurso público que estigmatiza y deshumaniza a las personas migrantes. Continuar bajo esta lógica es insostenible y no traerá buenos resultados. Estimamos que hay tres grandes áreas que deberían orientar nuestros esfuerzos en 2024 a fin de avanzar hacia una migración segura, ordenada y regular que genere beneficios para todos, tal como está consagrado en el Pacto de Marrakech. El acompañamiento de la OIM en estas tareas es de suma importancia, así como la coordinación de la Red de Migración de las Naciones Unidas. Primero, se necesitan más canales para la migración segura que respeten la dignidad y derechos humanos de todas las personas migrantes. En la declaración de Los Ángeles del año pasado, los países de las Américas nos comprometimos a ampliar las oportunidades de movilidad laboral, fortalecer los sistemas nacionales de refugio y ofrecer esquemas de estancia temporal para personas en situaciones de vulnerabilidad. México está haciendo su parte. Por ello, se han fortalecido los programas de movilidad laboral desde Centroamérica y se han ampliado las oportunidades de inserción laboral para los migrantes que se encuentran en nuestro territorio. Segundo, es necesario fortalecer la cooperación internacional para abordar las causas de origen de la migración. Esto implica un enfoque integral que combine medidas de desarrollo sostenible, fortalecimiento institucional y promoción de la paz y la seguridad. Esta es la visión que México impulsó en el encuentro y comunicado de Palenque de octubre pasado, en el que los países de la región acordamos trabajar para crear condiciones que permitan a las personas prosperar en sus lugares de origen. Los programas Sembrando Vida y Jóvenes Construyendo el Futuro que México impulsa en la región son ejemplo de esta visión. Finalmente, debemos seguir trabajando en el diseño de acciones basadas en el respeto de derechos humanos de todas las personas migrantes y en la promoción de un discurso público más objetivo, balanceado y humano sobre la migración que reconozca las contribuciones de los migrantes al desarrollo y el logro de los ODS. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Please, the floor with the distinguished representative of France. Uh, gracias, señor presidente. Euh, Monsieur le Président, Madame la Directrice Générale, la France s'associe aux déclarations de l'Union Européenne et de l'Ukraine. Je souhaite euh, exprimer notre soutien et nos voeux, Madame la Directrice Générale, à vous-même et à votre équipe pour vos débuts à la tête de l'Organisation Internationale des Migrations. Vous entamez votre mandat dans un contexte où le nombre de migrants dans le monde n'a jamais été aussi élevé dépassant en 2022 les 280 millions de personnes. Les migrations constituent, à n'en pas douter, l'un des phénomènes majeurs de notre temps et des années qui viennent. Chacun en connaît autant le potentiel que les risques. Il est donc du devoir des États de coopérer pour des phénomènes migratoires humains et maîtrisés dans un esprit de responsabilité partagée. Parmi les multiples facteurs de ces, de ces déplacements humains, trop souvent provoqués par les conflits, les crises et la pauvreté, le changement climatique s'affirme comme l'un des enjeux majeurs. La Banque mondiale a récemment estimé que d'ici 2050, 
plus de 216 millions de personnes pourraient être déplacées du fait des conséquences du réchauffement global. Ces défis appellent indubitablement à la mobilisation de votre organisation et de l'ensemble de la communauté internationale. Votre présence à la COP28 à Dubaï marque indiscutablement l'importance qui s'attache à ce phénomène. Madame la directrice générale, la France tient à saluer l'action de l'organisation en réponse aux migrations. Tout d'abord, le personnel de l'organisation, qui est en première ligne pour apporter protection et assistance aux populations vulnérables, notamment en Ukraine, au Soudan ou au Proche-Orient, hommage leur soit rendu. Dans toutes ces crises, le respect du droit international humanitaire et la protection des personnels humanitaires sont un impératif absolu. La France le réaffirmera. Les nouveaux défis, défis associés à ces contextes appellent également à renforcer la vision stratégique et les capacités de l'organisation. Plus généralement, en effet, la France salue les réformes entreprises par votre prédécesseur et vous-même, à ses côtés puis maintenant en responsabilité, Madame la Directrice Générale, sur la révision du budget, sur le renforcement des moyens des chefs de mission, sur le terrain et sur l'organisation générale de l'OIM. L'évaluation du MOPAN témoigne de la qualité de ces efforts. Dans ce contexte, et porté par la conviction qu'il faut à l'OIM une vision stratégique, la France a trois priorités. Premièrement, la promotion d'un multilatéralisme efficace et ouvert à tous les acteurs. C'est la raison pour laquelle la France jouera un, premier, un rôle de premier plan à la tête du prochain Forum mondial sur les migrations et le développement, qui doit associer tous les acteurs et qui doit rappeler notamment le respect des droits fondamentaux apportés aux migrants, qui sont des personnes ayant tous les droits de toute personne humaine. Je voudrais à ce sujet remercier les équipes de l'OIM pour leur appui, ainsi que les États membres qui travaillent à nos côtés sur la préparation de cette édition qui mettra à l'odeur les liens entre climat et mobilité. Deuxièmement, la recherche active de solutions. La France continuera à mettre en œuvre avec la mobilisation des administrations de l'État, des collectivités territoriales, du secteur privé et de la société civile, le pacte mondial pour des migrations sûres, ordonnées et régulières. La France souligne à cet égard le caractère absolument crucial des phénomènes migratoires pour l'Europe, ainsi que dans les rapports entre l'Europe, la Méditerranée, l'Afrique, le Proche et le Moyen-Orient, mais aussi le reste du monde, à commencer par l'Asie. Troisièmement et enfin, la mobilisation des financements. La France a porté à 36 millions d'euros nos contributions à l'OIM en 2023 et nous sommes l'un des principaux donateurs du Fonds multipartenaire pour les migrations. La France considère la mobilité humaine comme un levier du développement durable et nous soutenons dans ce cadre une réforme du financement du développement. Cette réflexion était au cœur des discussions du récent sommet de Paris pour un nouveau pacte financier mondial. En conclusion, Madame la Directrice Générale, et vous l'aurez compris au travers de ces trois priorités, vous pouvez compter sur le plein soutien de la France avec l'Europe à l'action de votre organisation. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Et le floor now to, Cro to distinguished representative of Croatia, please. Chair, Director General, Excellences, Distinguished Delegates. Croatia aligns with the EU statement and the joint statement to, do, to be delivered by Ukraine. Croatia warmly welcomes the new Director General, Ms. Amy Pope, and is looking forward to continue, continuing our valuable cooperation on all aspects of migration and mobility. At the same time, we thank you for your comprehensive report. As crises around the world continue to grow and force, force people to move, IOM's timely response has further highlighted its critical role as well as the special nature of its work. We commend IOM for its response in all crises as well as the, in the newest challenge, the situation in Gaza. Despite the attention given to Israeli-Gaza conflict, crisis in Sudan and Russian war in Ukraine, which has caused the biggest displacements in the world since World War II, we have not lost sight of the rest of the world. We are concerned that conflicts and crises, including serious consequences of climate change, are causing more human suffering and more forced displacement all around us. Croatia commends IOM's work across the whole spectrum of humanitarian development peace nexus, thus responding to emerging needs of affected population. We support IOM as the lead UN agency on migration. We recognize IOM's role in ensuring better coordination of migration-related work within the EU system. 
Croatia also supports the global compact for safe, orderly and regular migration. We believe that regular and legal migrations are necessary and a natural way to progress the fabric of both our society and our economy. We support your data-driven and people-focused approach with due attention to saving lives and protecting people on the move. In line with the strategic objectives that IOM set out, the need to promote legal pathways globally, Croatia supports IOM in taking this objective forward as part of a comprehensive human rights basis approach to migration in cooperation with other international organizations and stakeholders. We support the attention given to internal accountability, building on the results of MOPAN and the UN Advisory Alliance Assessment. Chair, Croatia is highly impacted by the irregular migration flows, especially through the Western Balkan route, where since the beginning of this year until the 15th of October, we registered more than 90,000 migrants, the number that puts this route immediately after the route of Mediterranean. During the same period, Croatian police intervened in more than 60,000 illegal border crossings, which is significantly higher, higher than in the entire previous year. Tackling the root causes of migration through a coordinated combination of development assistance and supporting parting countries in fight against migrant smuggling is the only appropriate action to prevent irregular migration flows. To achieve the maximum, we must use all available means. Croatia's objective is to rely as little as possible on the ad hoc activities and to address the acute situations and to replace them with systematic, comprehensive and sustainable migration and asylum policy. Migration governance and a comprehensive approach to migration remain key priorities for us and we count on IOM's leadership in that respect. Let me conclude by reiterating Croatia's appreciation and support for the vital role and work of the IOM. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now the floor, please, to the distinguished representative of Gabon. Merci, Monsieur le Vice-Président. <coughs> Madame la Directrice Générale, chers collègues, Mesdames et Messieurs, c'est un réel plaisir pour moi de prendre part à ce débat général qui nous offre. Une fois de plus, l'occasion d'échanger sur cette question importante des migrations devenue l'une des composantes récurrentes des crises auxquelles le monde est confronté. Je voudrais à cet égard remercier la directrice générale, Ami Pop, pour son rapport et saluer l'excellent travail ainsi que l'engagement de tout le personnel de l'OIM. Mon pays s'associe pleinement à la déclaration prononcée par le Rwanda au nom du groupe africain. Il me plaît ensuite d'exprimer mes chaleureuses félicitations à Madame la Présidente, Son Excellence Madame Katharina Stach, pour son élection à la tête de ce Conseil, et nous lui souhaitons un mandat couronné de succès. Monsieur le Vice-président, la session d'aujourd'hui se tient dans une conjoncture marquée particulièrement par des crises multiformes liées, entre autres, au conflit, à l'insécurité et au terrorisme, au changement climatique, aux crises humanitaires ainsi qu'aux événements politiques qui pèsent lourdement sur la gouvernance de la migration et les déplacés forcés à travers le monde. Au regard de leur gravité, ces crises nous donnent l'opportunité de réinventer la mobilité humaine afin qu'elle soit sûre et plus inclusive en conformité avec le droit international humanitaire, les droits humains et le droit des migrants. Une telle approche nécessite la conjugaison de nos efforts et l'amélioration de la coordination en tous les partenaires internationaux, régionaux et nationaux, afin d'asseoir les principes d'une meilleure gouvernance mondiale de la migration. Monsieur le vice-président, depuis des décennies, le Gabon a toujours été un pays de transit et de destination pour de nombreux migrants, originaires pour la plupart de l'Afrique centrale et de l'Ouest. Selon les données officielles, il compte environ 352 615 migrants, soit 20% de la population nationale. Depuis le 30 novembre 2020 à nos jours, une collaboration multisectorielle a été mise en place avec l'appui des organisations internationales, telles que l'OIM, en vue d'établir des politiques migratoires cohérentes, en lien notamment avec la mise en œuvre du Pacte mondial pour des migrations sûres, ordonnées et régulières, respectueuses de la dignité humaine et profitables à tous. En avril 2022, 
La coopération sur cette question s'est intensifiée à travers notamment un programme visant à améliorer la gestion de la migration. Ce plan d'action transversal est orienté vers une gestion stratégique particulièrement visible à travers plusieurs objectifs prioritaires qui tiennent compte du pacte de Marrakech, financé par le Fonds des Nations Unies pour la Sécurité Humaine et mis en œuvre par l'UNICEF, l'OIM, l'ONU-DICI et l'OHCR en collaboration avec une task force nationale. Il s'agit entre autres du renforcement du cadre législatif sur la traite des personnes et le trafic illicite des migrants. Le 5 juillet 2019, la loi organique numéro 42-2018 porte un code pénal qui consacre un chapitre sur les condamnations liées à la traite des personnes, adultes et enfants, a été promulgué. Dans le cadre de la coopération, en vue de faciliter le retour et la réadmission des migrants en toute sécurité et dignité et leur réintégration durable, il est à noter qu'en 2021, le gouvernement gabonais, la société civile et l'OIM ont procédé d'une part au retour et à la réintégration économique de près de 179 migrants en provenance de certains pays et d'autre part au retour et à la réintégration de certains de nos ressortissants. À ce stade, nous pouvons dire, Monsieur le Vice-président, que de nombreux défis restent à relever en dépit des efforts remarquables qui méritent d'être soutenus et appuyés. C'est le lieu de solliciter notamment l'assistance technique des partenaires au développement pour renforcer l'encadrement des programmes et projets initiés au niveau national. Pour conclure, Monsieur le Vice-président, je voudrais ré réitérer la détermination de mon pays à poursuivre ses efforts en faveur d'une protection de qualité et respectueuse des personnes conformément à ses engagements. Nous réaffirmons par ailleurs notre soutien à toutes les initiatives de l'OIM pour parvenir à des solutions durables en matière de migration. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Et now the floor, please, for the comments of our Director General. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to start with the government of Costa Rica, who has been um, a, a real partner in efforts to um, respond to what has been historic flows of migrants um, coming primarily from the Darien. Um, as we saw in the side event that was hosted with the government of Panama um, this morning, Costa Rica has really adopted a whole of government approach, looking at how to um, develop your national integrated migration policy, to support migrants who are in transit, to develop a coordination structure within the country, and to ensure the, the regularization of migration pathways. Um, we at IOM have scaled up our efforts considerably in your country, and it's um, recognizing the tremendous um, both challenges, but also opportunities that exist. Look forward to continuing that work together with you. Um, and to the government of Vanuatu, so it was my great pleasure to be able to engage in the um, Pacific Island Forum. As, as we have discussed throughout the last couple of days, what's happening in the Pacific Islands is something that is um, existential. And we see our work in building the strength and resilience of your country and other countries in the Pacific Islands as um, critical to building lessons, best practices, and the resilience of communities everywhere in the world who will be impacted by um, climate impact. But we see that first and foremost, what's happening in Vanuatu with the, uh, the intensity, with the frequency of storms in particular, with the impact um, on communities that are already vulnerable as a result, um, this work is absolutely essential. And so we look forward to continuing the work with you to strengthen the resilience of your communities in the face of what is really a, a generational um, challenge for all of us around the world. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the government of Sri Lanka, one with whom we've had a long-standing partnership, more than 30 years of very, very close cooperation. And we appreciate your work to strengthen the policy environment um, within your country, including what was the recently launched National Policy and Action Plan on Migration for Employment in Sri Lanka, and the work that you are doing to combat human trafficking. We congratulate you, Sri Lanka, for the work that you're doing. I'm looking over here, sorry, the work that you're doing doing to um, lead in multilateral fora, particularly to further the climate change agenda and to pursue climate justice. And we appreciate everything you're doing to really drive forward the work and the mechanisms on transitional justice for countries um, around the world. So we look forward to very much to continuing that 
conversation with you to enhancing um, and building on the capacity, including in the legal and policy environment, and of course, in providing service to affected populations. Uh, Mexico, it's um, a pleasure to have you here to recognize the work that you're doing, again, given the historic numbers of people who are on the move in the Americas, and really the leading role that you are playing in Mexico to implement what is part of the uh, Los Angeles Declaration on Migration and Protection in creating more regular legal uh, pathways for persons who are already on the move, particularly those who are um, vulnerable. So we appreciate that work that you're doing. And importantly, we appreciate the leadership that you are demonstrating in promoting this interregional dialogue and co cooperation. We see coming from it a commitment to comprehensive solutions. The recent Palenque Summit is an excellent example of where you're bringing all partners to the table to build out um, a comprehensive and more strategic approach to the movements of people in the world. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that we stand in solidarity with you and the people who are impacted by the recent Hurricane Otis. Um, and we are willing to provide whatever technical support or service to communities who've been impacted. So thank you. Um, to the government of France, I first of all want to recognize um, the leadership that we've seen with the government of France in a couple of key areas. Um, of course, with the Global Forum for Migration and development, where France is leading the way to uh, put the spotlight on the impact of climate change on human mobility, and doing so by building partnerships with the private sector. You see a nice alignment of the work that um, the government of France is leading with work that we are um, leading here within the International Organization for Migration. And we want to thank you for all the work you're doing to scale up complementary pathways to drive forward work against the Global Compact for Migration and importantly, for your engagement um, and your uh, financial commitment to the multi-partner trust fund in order to implement the Global Compact for Migration. Croatia, um, we are very, very pleased by the work that you're doing across the entire migration management efforts, um, whether it's on migration governance, whether it's on the integration of third country nationals who are in your country, whether it is on border management, um, in some cases, voluntary return and reintegration, and then finally, the work we're doing to identify uh, safe and regular pathways for more people. We recognize that, um, especially with your uh, recent accession to the Schengen area and the Eurozone, which is something where we congratulate you on, um, we stand ready to support all of your efforts um, associated with this important integration effort. Thank you very much. And uh, Gabon, I want to um, acknowledge the work that Gabon has done to um, promote the the um, survivors of human trafficking, to build a, a system within your own government that really recognizes the tremendous vulnerabilities of people who are being trafficked. Uh, we've seen it within in terms of recent legislation, but also in terms of the work you're doing to provide support through private reception centers, um, including for women victims of violence and victims of trafficking. We also have seen tremendous uh, work that you're doing with some of partner government in the region, including Benin, and recognize that you have an upcoming meeting in January with the government to combat trafficking in persons, and also to um, validate the decree that you recently created on the National Commission for the Prevention and Fight Against Human Trafficking and critically emphasizing that all people can be trafficked, not just children. And that is really um, tremendous uh, progress development in your government, and we appreciate your leadership on the issue to protect um, some of the most vulnerable people in the world. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, DG. Let's start then with our third block of uh, speakers. I will, I would like to remind, please, delegations that uh, we, the statement should be limited to three minutes. The first speaker of this third block, please, to the distinguished representative of Moldova through a video. Chair, Director General, Excellencies and Distinguished Delegates, on behalf of the government of the Republic of Moldova, I am honored to address the Council and I warmly congratulate Ms. Amy Pope 
as new International Organization for Migration Director General. Moldova looks forward to continuing the partnership with IOM under your leadership on all aspects of migration, acknowledging the priority areas of the findings of the Director General's report, saving lives and protecting people on move, driving solutions to displacement and facilitating pathways for regular migration. We express gratitude to IOM along with all partners involved in the joint effort to evacuate Moldova citizens from Gaza Strip. In the wake of the war of Russia against Ukraine, Moldova's government works closely with IOM to strengthen the capacity of the Ministry of Interior Affairs to meet the challenges posed by refugees crisis. As the war against Ukraine is dragging on, we remain committed to host the Ukraine people and facilitate their social integration and to maintain the temporary protection regime. Today, our call to the international community is to concentrate common efforts on increasing capacity of all governmental agencies dealing with public order and security, enhancing resilience capacity of Moldova in keeping the safety and security within the borders, but also in the region as we are neighboring with the war zone, especially continuing on support in the following area. The Migration and Asylum Program align with the objectives of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Return Migration, preventing combating trafficking in person and irregular migration by providing accurate information on legal migration opportunities, setting national partnerships, strengthening cooperation with development partners. The national program to stimulate returns and facilitate the integration of citizens of Moldova involved in the migration process. The national climate change adaption program that incorporates input on migration, environment and climate change. On this note, I would like to reiterate that Moldova will be further engaged in common and supported efforts to put in place policies and practices and to enhance cooperation on achieving safe, orderly and regular migration. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Now the floor please to distinguished representative of Madagascar. Monsieur le Président, Madame la Directrice Générale, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, c'est un grand honneur pour moi de prendre la parole aujourd'hui dans le cadre de cette session du Conseil de l'OIM en tant que représentant permanent de Madagascar. Ma délégation félicite Madame Emipo pour son élection historique à la tête de l'organisation. Nous la remercions aussi pour son rapport ainsi que pour ses réalisations à Madagascar dans le cadre de sa précédente fonction. Madagascar, doté d'une bio biodiversité unique, est confronté en permanence à des défis majeurs, dont l'impact dévastateur et régulier du changement climatique que la grande île subit de plein fouet. Située dans une zone cyclonique, Madagascar a été traversée par cinq dépressions protocoles au cours des deux dernières années. Cela a occasionné de pluies torrentielles à l'origine de déplacements des populations locales. En effet, les inondations récurrentes combinées à la sécheresse ont vu 291 000 déplacements internes, chiffre le plus élevé jamais enregistré à Madagascar. Du fait de la sécheresse, des personnes se voient contraintes de quitter leur résidence pour assurer leur survie. C'est le cas par exemple de groupes de populations du sud de Madagascar, où l'aridité du sol les oblige à migrer plus au nord. Cette dynamique de migration interne a des répercussions non négligeables sur la structure sociale et économique de la société malagasse. Ainsi, la mobilité humaine devient un impératif de survie, avec des déplacements massifs vers des zones assurant plus de sécurité alimentaire. C'est également un impératif d'harmonie sociale, pour prévenir les tensions causées par un déplacement de masse entre les nouveaux arrivants 
et la communauté locale, notamment pour l'usage de terrains agricoles. Face à cette réalité complexe, Madagascar, avec l'expertise de l'OIM, a mis en place des stratégies d'adaptation à travers des projets ayant déjà porté leurs fruits. Dans le cas du Grand Sud de Madagascar, exposé à la sécheresse, l'utilisation de l'outil élaboré par l'OIM, appelé « matrice de suivi des déplacements », a permis de disséminer des données relatives au déplacement de population pour une réponse ajustée aux besoins en matière de protection, de nutrition et de sécurité alimentaire. Je citerai aussi l'appui de l'OIM au rapatriement des ressortissants malagas en situation de détresse ou de vulnérabilité à l'étranger, ainsi que notre partenariat avec l'OIM dans le domaine de la migration de travail. Pour Madagascar, le changement climatique exerce indéniablement une pression significative, significative sur la migration. Il est dès lors de notre devoir de prendre des mesures pour assurer, pour atténuer ces effets dévastateurs en investissant dans des solutions durables qui préservent la sécurité et le bien-être des communautés. La lutte contre le changement climatique et la promotion d'une mobilité résiliente à l'échelle nationale ou transfrontalières doivent être au cœur de toute action en matière de gouvernance migratoire afin de garantir un avenir plus stable et équitable pour tous. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Now the floor please to the distinguished representative of Honduras. Señor vicepresidente, señora directora general Excelencias y distinguidos colegas, quisiéramos iniciar felicitando al embajador Stats por su elección a la presidencia de este consejo y a los representantes de la República de Corea del Sur, Perú, Túnez por sus respectivas designaciones a las vicepresidencias y la relatoría de esta reunión. Asimismo, felicitamos a la señora Amy Pope al haber asumido el cargo de nueva directora general y le reiteramos nuestro compromiso de continuar trabajando en una visión compartida para asegurar el cumplimiento de los objetivos trazados en el Pacto Mundial para las Migraciones, así como también agradecemos la presentación de su informe, particularmente en relación a las tres esferas programáticas prioritarias que se plantean desde esta nueva administración. Expresamos nuestra adhesión a la declaración conjunta del Grupo Latinoamericano y Caribeño realizada por Argentina el día lunes de esta semana. Nuestro gobierno, como país campeón del pacto, ha sostenido un firme compromiso con la promoción de una migración segura, ordenada y regular para todas las personas en movilidad humana y bajo un enfoque de derechos humanos, de género y de interculturalidad, respetando el derecho humano a migrar y brindando garantías de protección y seguridad humana a la persona migrante. Estamos garantizando un funcionamiento eficiente de las instituciones públicas, e impulsando acciones que permitan la integración y reintegración de la población migrante y retornada al país, que actualmente oscila anualmente entre 30.000 y 60.000 migrantes. Así como también hemos adoptado medidas para lograr el acercamiento de las diásporas a la gestión del gobierno, con el objetivo de facilitar rutas claras de atención, asistencia e inclusión social, económica y cultural. Tenemos grandes retos y desafíos en materia migratoria, pero durante los últimos dos años la voluntad política de nuestro gobierno ha sido evidente y ha representado un claro cambio de paradigma al elaborar una política migratoria humanista, integral, con un enfoque de derechos humanos y, lo más importante, con una participación significativa de personas migrantes en el diseño de las políticas. Solamente en un año, entre octubre de 2022 a octubre de 2023, se brindó una amnistía migratoria a 561.709 personas y hemos aumentado la cantidad de oficinas consulares en estados con mayor afluencia de migrantes hondureños, con especial mención a la cooperación bilateral con Estados Unidos, en donde se van a inaugurar oficinas adicionales para concentrar los servicios en la atención de menores no acompañados. Para finalizar, ratificamos nuestro compromiso de continuar trabajando con otros estados y actores en el cumplimiento del pacto para una migración segura, ordenada y regular para todas las personas en movilidad humana bajo un enfoque de derechos humanos, de género y de interculturalidad, así como también nos motiva el liderazgo y la visión que se introduce desde ahora por parte de la nueva Dirección General y estamos listos para continuar nuestra labor conjunta. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. And now the floor to the distinguished representative of Denmark, please. Thank you, Chair. 
Denmark aligns itself with the statement made on behalf of the EU and its member states. Firstly, let me express our deep concern over the growing number of conflict-related humanitarian crises. We deplore the loss of all civilian lives and would like to reiterate the obligation of all parties to respect and ensure respect for international human law. Secondly, let me join others in congratulating you, Director General, on your election. We look forward to our, continue our strong cooperation with uh, IOM, with you and your team. And thank you also for your comprehensive uh, reports, in particular for highlighting the importance of on earmarked funding and how it enables IOM to deliver on its strategic priorities, responsibilities within the UN system, and strengthen IOM's ability to build long-term partnerships. This year, Denmark has doubled its earmarked funding, uh, multi-year funding to IOM, and we are proud to be among the top, absolute top donors within this category. Also because it's clear that the current balance between project and on earmarked funding poses a challenges for the organization and for results, as also highlighted in the recent MOPAN report. Chair, IOM remains a key and very close partner for Denmark, and we value the depth and scope of our partnership. We commend IOM for progress made in the terms of organizational reforms and note the progress in rolling out the strategic results framework. Further, we welcome the focus on continued investments in strengthening IOM's core structure, and we believe the MOPAN uh, report provides valuable guidance for the next generation of IOM reforms. Director General, we welcome the priorities you have outlined and look forward to engaging in a new strategic plan. We're pleased to see the increased focus on addressing the interlinkages between climate and human mobility. We need better data, predict predictive analysis on mobility pa patterns, as well as resilience building and early warning systems to really prevent climate-induced uh, migration and, ex and ensure protection and solutions for those on the move. Further, we welcome the commitment to strengthen cooperation between UNHCR and IOM on mixed migration flows. This complex challenge must be addressed through the whole of route-based approaches and by addressing the root causes of irregular migration. This is also key to the functioning of the asylum systems and we wish to create a more human and fair asylum system in Europe. And we are looking at all viable uh, solutions in this regard. And it is, of course, paramount that all solutions respect international human rights and are in accordance with international law. And finally, we welcome IOM's f increased focus uh, on preventing and responding to sexual exploitation and abuse and sexual harassment. Applying a victim-centered approach is key, and we encourage IOM to further strengthen its efforts in this regard. I thank you. Thank you very much. Now the floor to the distinguished representative of Paraguay. Gracias, Presidente. Me permito expresar en primer lugar nuevamente eh, las sinceras felicitaciones a la señora Amy Pope por su reciente asunción al cargo. Celebramos, Amy, que una mujer como usted eh, de probada solvencia académica y tra gran trayectoria lidere esta importante organización. Tenga por seguro que el Paraguay la apoyará en toda su gestión. Para nosotros, para el Paraguay, la migración es un tema de gran relevancia. En las últimas dos décadas, alrededor de medio millón de paraguayos han decidido emigrar, tanto a países de la región como a otros fuera de ella. Y el número de inmigrantes que viven en Paraguay ha tenido un incremento significativo, llegando al casi el 10%. Así también vemos que a nivel global la cifra de desplazamientos ha ido en aumento por causa de conflictos nuevos y prolongados, alcanzando una alarmante cifra de 110 millones de desplazados, según los últimos informes de ACNUR. Ante este inquietante escenario, el Paraguay se suma al llamado al diálogo y a la paz realizado por la comunidad internacional para el cese de disputas catalizadoras de las movilizaciones forzosas. Estos fenómenos migratorios han incentivado aún más la formulación de políticas públicas que brinden una atención integral a todos los desafíos que plantea la situación de la persona migrante, así como las oportunidades que genera la migración como un fenómeno creciente. Los Estados estamos obligados a generar proyectos y lineamientos que deben estar en armonía con los instrumentos internacionales 
ya existentes en la materia a fin de coadyuvar a la consecución de una migración segura, ordenada, regular y sobre todo que tenga presente los derechos humanos de las personas migrantes. Mi país reconoce el rol de liderazgo y articulación que tiene la OIM a nivel mundial para proveer la asistencia necesaria para dar una respuesta certera y eficaz a las dinámicas migratorias que surgen como consecuencia de múltiples factores sociales y económicos. Por esta razón, el Paraguay considera a la OIM como un socio estratégico para el intercambio de experiencias, desarrollo de capacidades, implementación de políticas y el fortalecimiento de la capacidad de respuesta humanitaria. Actualmente el Paraguay se beneficia de los servicios que provee el Midas y aguarda expectante el emprendimiento de otras iniciativas con la reciente creada Dirección Nacional de Migraciones. Con respecto a los cambios que se encuentran en curso en la estructura organizativa, eh, señor presidente, deseo afirmar que Paraguay presta su más de decidida predisposición a considerar toda modificación que haga posible una organización cada vez más eficiente, innovadora y apta para responder a las diversas demandas. El proceso para elaborar un plan estratégico correspondiente al periodo 24-28 puesto en marcha en julio del año pasado, será de vital importancia para la aplicación de un enfoque más estratégico y pragmático para la formulación de soluciones a largo plazo. Por este motivo, el Paraguay invita a la organización a garantizar una amplia serie de consultas con los Estados miembros y todos los actores relevantes para este efecto. Así también resalto la importancia de toda reforma o plan que tiene que tomar en cuenta las diferencias que existen en las distintas regiones en cuanto a la cantidad y composición de los flujos migratorios. Estos matices deben ser tomados en cuenta para que la organización siga brindando un asesoramiento adecuado y especializado en todo lo relativo a las prácticas migratorias. Igualmente, en un escenario de recursos cada vez más escasos y situaciones de crisis que incrementan los flujos migratorios, es esencial dedicar los mejores esfuerzos al fortalecimiento de la organización y a la eficiencia de los presupuestos. Por este motivo, saludamos los avances institucionales mencionados por la directora general en su informe relativos a la mejora de la rendición de cuentas, la optimización de la eficiencia operativa y la capacidad de respuesta, la ampliación del alcance de los efectos de los proyectos, entre otros. Eh, aprovecho la ocasión, presidente, para finalmente informar que Paraguay continúa con AINCO trabajando para derribar todas las narrativas negativas que se generan en torno a la migración a través de políticas basadas en derechos y orientadas a la efectiva integración del migrante al medio que lo rodea. Acciones tales como el acceso gratuito a la salud pública, facilidades para la apertura de empresas e inserción al mercado laboral, homologación de títulos, acceso a la seguridad social, entre otras, demuestran que son muy efectivas para garantizar el impacto positivo y su inserción en la vida pública nacional. Reitero el compromiso con una movilización humana digna que permita la creación de oportunidades de desarrollo tanto a los migrantes como a las sociedades de acogida. Muchas gracias. Gracias, embajador. The floor, please, to the distinguished representative of Belarus. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I would like to wish Madam Pope and her wonderful team all success in implementation of the new IOM DG ambitious plan and approaches which Belarus shares and fully supports. The Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration emphasizes the shared responsibility of states to mutually respect migration needs and to protect the safety and dignity of all migrants in accordance with the international law. At the same time, armed conflicts and interstate inequality, underdevelopment and instability, unilateral coercive measures and climate change, all these factors increase the vulnerability of many developing countries and their population, stimulate human mobility and contribute to new waves of irregular migration. We welcome IOM efforts at the, as the leading crisis response agency and the organization commitments to work together with the international community to anticipate and mitigate the root causes of irregular migration. Belarus shares the IOM commitment to saving lives and protecting people on the move. The challenges 
of migration cannot be solved by building walls, denying access to the territory or forcibly expelling migrants. Manifestation of racism and xenophobia against migrants should be totally unacceptable. Belarus supports the expansion of IOM partnership in the humanitarian field. My country has received a significant number of forced migrants and refugees from Ukraine. The Belarusian state provides them with all necessary support by guaranteeing access to employment, education, medical service, and social security. We are grateful to IOM for their support and cooperation in this area. IOM has always been and remains our important partner in joint efforts to combat trafficking in persons and protect its victims. We appreciate agency for its valuable contribution in establishment in Minsk and continuing support of the ITC, International Trading Center, on countering trafficking and illegal, illegal migration. We believe that current growth of migration to Europe stimulates the activity of traffickers, uh, so the anti-trafficking efforts of the IOM and member states should be strengthened. We welcome the publication of the first global technical guidance for administrative data on trafficking to address the lack of quality evidence and research available for policy and program development. Belarus is interested in joining the training on this standardized approach, including on the basis of ITC in Minsk. Taking into account current international trends, and IOM approach to facilitating pathways for regular migration, Belarus also trying to take appropriate measures. Thus, on July 1st this year, came into force the new legislation on external labor migration, aimed at reducing bureaucratic barriers to migrants' access to national labor mar market, debilitating labor gaps, and attracting qualified migrants' workers to the specific sectors of the economy. However, we understand that efforts to facilitate legal migration could be beneficial to employees in some countries facing labor shortage, but for the countries of origin, it could encourage a skills drain in sensitive areas, for example, such as healthcare, etc. In this regard, I have a question. How does IOM plan to address this prob uh, problem in its work with countries of origin in the context of facilitating migration routes. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate that Belarus is interested in continuing cooperation with IOM in all areas of its mandate in order to improve the national migration policy, to strengthen the capacity of migration services, and to develop result-oriented collaboration with all partners and stakeholders, uh, stakeholders nationally and internationally. I thank you. Thank you very much. Please, the floor with the distinguished representative of Israel. Thank you, Vice Chairperson. At the outset, I would like to congratulate Ambassador Katarina Stach and the new Bureau for, uh, for the election of, uh, for this Council. I wish you all the success for uh, the upcoming year. I would also like to welcome Director General Pope to her first IOM Council, and we look forward to the appointment of two new Deputy Director Generals. Israel would like to thank the Director General for her report. We welcome, in particular, the launch of the Gender and Migration Research Policy Action Lab, GenMIG, and the publication of the first global technical guidance for the administrative data on trafficking in person. Vice Chairperson, on the occasion of the IOM Council, we would normally focus our in intervention on IOM work. Unfortunately, after October 7th, reality has changed. On Saturday, October 7th, Thousands of Hamas terrorists entered Israel and massacred over 1,200 innocent people, women, men, children, older persons, and persons with disabilities. More than 240 people were abducted and taken captive in Gaza, many from countries represented here today, without any information on their whereabouts or condition. 
Among the hostages are young children, persons with disabilities, and older persons. Many still remain in Gaza, and Israel will do all it can to bring them back home. Any civilian life lost, be it in Israel or in Gaza, is a tra tragedy. However, let us be clear. The Hamas leadership bears full responsibility for all civilian life lost, Israelis and Palestinians. Some of the statements made here over the past few days have openly supported Hamas and have tried to whitewash or deny their crimes. For years, these states have given Hamas a free pass to carry out their crimes. For years, many of these states have funded and armed terrorist groups which actively seek Israel's destruction. It appears for many that their hatred for Israel overcomes any desire to, uh, to fight the very same terrorism which has cost many lives over previous decades. Vice Chairperson, on October 7th, it was not just Israelis that were affected by the terrorist onslaught. Nationals from Thailand, Nepal, Tanzania, Ukraine, Sri Lanka, Moldova, Germany, Eritrea, Sudan, China, Canada, Cambodia, and the Philippines were brutally murdered, including many migrant workers. For example, 10 Nepalese students were murdered, having gone to a kibbutz as part of a learning program where they helped to grow and harvest avocados and tomatoes. A Hamas terrorist also tried to decapitate a Thai worker with a garden hoe, a crime filmed by Hamas so the world could see. Many migrant workers, including from Thailand and Philippines, were also taken hostage and on that fateful day. Thankfully, some of them have uh, already been released. Within Israel, more than 200,000 Israelis are internally displaced amid the destructions of their communities, the ongoing Gaza war, and threats of rockets. As well as terrorist activity in the north of the country. The government of Israel is seeking to their needs until it uh, will be safe for them to return home. Israel has always taken its obligation towards migrants and migrant workers very seriously. Amid the current situation, and despite of it, Israel will carry on supporting IOM's work and improving the rights of those that it serves within our country and abroad. I thank you. Thank you. And now, please, we will hear the comments of the Director General. Thank you very much. Um, I'll start with the Republic of Moldova and really commend the government for the work that it's done in response to the persons who have been um, displaced, the refugees who are coming from Ukraine in particular, um, and the work that the government has done to enact various measures to support their inclusion, um, including temporary protection, as well as ensuring that persons have access to health care, the reform of the social protection system, and to approve a new strategy to prevent the violence against women and girls. We appreciate your work doing um, both on the migration governance as well as the support to affected populations. Um, to the government of Madagascar, First, we want to recognize the tremendous impact that climate change has had on your people, many of whom are already vulnerable. I had the opportunity to see some of it firsthand. We recognize that Madagascar is impacted um, in ways that are very, very, uh, in some cases unique but devastating as a result of cyclones and as a result of drought in particular. And we see the displacement of populations directly as a result of that climate impact. 
So we're committed to working with you on that issue, as well as raising, raising awareness and resources to address the impact of climate on those vulnerable communities. And we want to commend the work that you're doing to maximize the benefits of migration, including by supporting your national policy letter for the engagement of your diaspora and your own national migration policy. This is a place where um, IOM stands ready to build your capacity, your support, and support to ensure that you really are able to make migration work for all people. Uh, for the government of Honduras, uh, first I want to recognize the leadership of your government, particularly in advocating for the protection of women and the protection of children, including those who are unaccompanied. Um, your humanist migration policy uh, for your, your government, which is something that we have provided technical support to, is something that we believe is absolutely essential. It is a good model on how we can address comprehensively the needs of all migrants who are coming uh, through your country. And we recognize that you have seen a significant increase in the number of migrants who have been crossing through Honduras. And Honduras has experienced almost half a million crossings of persons of different nationalities and that the impact on your country and on your nationals is significant. So we really applaud the work you've done to come up with a much more comprehensive approach, including the support to, to vulnerable people. Uh, the, to the government of Denmark, um, I just want to acknowledge the tremendous partnership that we've had and recognize the continued support for the uh, governance of our own organization, ensuring that we have the resources we need, ensuring that we have the ability to put those resources to good use to make sure that our work across the world to persons who are extremely vulnerable is compliant, meets their expectations, uses our resources well, is, diver is diverse and inclusive, both in terms of our workforce but in terms of, and also in terms of its impact. You're one of the few donors who recognize early on the importance of multi-year unearmarked funding. Um, that is a model that we hope all governments will um, recognize um, in your support to IOM. It effectively allows IOM to do a much more strategic, impactful work around the world. Um, and we're grateful for your recognition of that. I also want to acknowledge that we're pleased to have recently signed the multilateral partnership agreement with your government in four priority areas, including the strategic and organizational effectiveness of IOM. Um, also, strengthening IOM's ability to engage within the UN system, supporting capacity building of governments, uh, for better migration management and identifying the link between climate change and migration management. And we very much hope that we can um, engage in a joint field visit um, with your um, minister so that we can see um, firsthand the impact of your support to the organization. I'd like to commend the government of Paraguay for its good practice in defending migrants and their rights through the Ministry of Public Defense. You're really achieving timely and effective solutions. It's decentralized and it's free of charge to migrants. And we, can, we encourage you to continue providing this assistance. It is a best practice, particularly in the region, and it's something that we uh, want to highlight for the rest of the world as something that is as truly a model. We also welcome the decision of the Migration Authority of Paraguay to initiate the digitalization of records um, and the automation of the residence application process. Using this kind of technology-driven approach is more efficient, more environmentally sustainable, more transparent, and it's ultimately more effective for the communities that we're serving. And we look forward to continuing the cooperation with you both in terms of providing capacity assistance to the government itself, but also to ensure the support for persons who are on the move uh, through your country. Um, with regard to Belarus, we recognize the work that Belarus has done to respond to migration and refugee crises, and we appreciate that cooperation and the support that we've had, particularly um, with regard to the persons who have fled from from Ukraine in the wake of that um, uh, conflict there. We welcome your participation in the Global Compact on Migration and your submission of a voluntary national report on GCM. We see that there has been um, uh, skills drain in host countries, and we're looking at good examples of how we can um, 
have uh, affected agreements that supplement the investment in training institutions so that countries do not just lose the tremendous talent they have to other governments, but really we double the impact by ensuring that we have um, training of your own nationals, training of nationals who work abroad, training of nationals who stay, and really encouraging um, the use of, for example, circular migration as a way to ensure that we continue to have the enriching experience of migrants around the world. And then finally to the government of Israel. We start by offering our condolences for the more than 1,200 people, as you say, nationals from around the world who were killed as a result of the attacks on the 7th of October. And we condemn the taking of hostages and recognize the, um, again, the multiple nationalities of persons who were taken hostage and persons who were displaced. We are very, very hopeful that the truce that was agreed last week between parties um, will continue to lead to the release of hostages so they can return home safely as possible, and that it will stop the suffering of all people, all civilians in the region. We recognize that we have a shared commitment to the protection of civilians, and that as a humanitarian actor, ultimately our job is to address human suffering wherever it is found um, across the region. I also want to recall that Israel has been one of our earliest members of this organization um, and that IOM has been providing support to returning Israelis um, uh, over the last several decades. And even in recent days, we've been responding to embassy requests from different countries around the world to assist those nationals who are residing in Israel, third country nationals who want to go home, and to assist those nationals um, who are coming from Gaza through the Rafa gate um, who are also looking to go home. So we appreciate the continued cooperation and engagement of Israel and other partner governments so that we can ensure um, the protection of civilians. And finally, I want to thank Israel, who's been a real champion on ensuring that we have policies and practices that enhance not only the transparency and efficiency of our organization, but the inclusivity, um, including gender equity, but the inclusivity of all people, including persons with disabilities, in the work that we do. So I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director General. We start now with the third block of speakers. Let me remind at this moment that we have one hour more of work this morning, and we have still two blocks, 15 high representatives. So please, I remind another time the limit of three minutes for each of them. Thank you very much, and please the floor to the distinguished representative of Austria. Uh, thank you, Chair. At the outset, let me congratulate you, Director General, on your election and assumption of office as the first woman at the helm of the IOM. Um, and let me also thank all IOM staff at headquarters and in the field for their dedicated commitment and hard work in often difficult and uh, dangerous operating environments. Austria aligns itself with the EU statement and the joint statement delivered by Ukraine. We condemn in the strongest terms Russia's unprovoked war of aggression against Ukraine and the brutal and discriminate uh, terrorist attacks by Hamas across Israel. We are deeply concerned about the continued escalation of the conflict in Sudan. We deplore the loss of all civilian lives and reiterate the obligation of all parties to armed conflict to respect and ensure respect for international humanitarian law in all circumstances. We believe that no country can address migration on its own. Austria continues to pursue a comprehensive approach to migration. This includes addressing the challenges and root causes of irregular migration, building effective, sustainable and tailor-made partnerships, as well as strengthening the synergies between humanitarian development and peace actors. Our approach relies on close cooperation with countries of origin, transit and destination, as well as other partners with IOM at the forefront. The migration landscape continues to evolve and the situation remains volatile. In order to place Austria's humanitarian response to the multiple crises the world is facing on a solid strategic basis, with concrete, concrete aims and responsibilities, we have elaborated the new Austrian strategy on humanitarian assistance, which our government adopted last month. 
The strategy stresses that the main causes of migration, flight, and displacement are armed conflicts, human rights violations, and the consequences of the climate crisis. It highlights that refugees and IDPs are among the most vulnerable groups in need of adequate protection and care. Due to climate change, extreme weather events such as floods, hurricanes, and droughts are becoming more and more frequent and increasing in intensity. Climate change disasters, limited resources, and hunger are drivers of conflict and displacement. In crisis and disaster situations, Austria provides humanitarian assistance where it is needed most on the ground. Since the beginning of, the, of this current legislative period in 2019, the Austrian government has quintupled the budget of our main humanitarian instrument to the amount of 77.5 million euros for the year 2023, with a further increase to 80 million euros set for 2024. As the strategy set out, uh, sets out, Austrian responding to humanitarian crisis commits to enhance its focus on vulnerable groups, in particular women and girls, LGBTIQ plus persons, and persons with disabilities. Austria values the role of IOM as key partner in international migration management worldwide. We appreciate the great bilateral cooperation with your organization in the context of a multitude of joint projects. In 23, Austria supported the IOM's operations, in particular in the areas of migration management, assistant voluntary return and reintegration, combating migrant smuggling and human trafficking, information campaigns, and improvement of living conditions of migrants in transit countries through accommodation and healthcare provision. We also responded to the IOM appeal for Tunisia, and as in previous years, contributed to the IOM Development Fund. Furthermore, it's a privilege for me to announce that Austria has recently taken the decision to support an IOM project in Libya with 2 million euros. We are proud to host and substantially support IOM's regional office for Eastern and Southeastern Europe and Central Asia, as well as the country office for Austria in Vienna. Austria will continue to support IOM as the lead UN agency on migration. In view of ever-changing challenges, we look forward to working with IOM on fit-for-purpose responses and swift reaction to altering uh, developments uh, in the area of migration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, the floor with the distinguished representative of Mongolia. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I would like to thank the Director General and the Chairperson of the Council for their leadership, as well as the staff of, of the IOM for their hard work and dedication. I would like to express Mongolia's commendation for the IOM's consistent fulfillment of its designated function and successful implementation of its strategic goals and policies. The distinctive role of the IOM has become increasingly apparent in addressing timely issues such as climate-induced human mobility, displacement and escalating need for humanitarian aid in recent years. Mongolia supports the strategic policy and programs of IOM administration and the initiative of the fellow member states in the regard of implementing SDGs and global compact for migration. Mongolia calls for urgency of fund and long term data driving solution for migration affected by climate change and endorses efforts to provide innovative, sustainable livelihood options for those at risk of unsafe migration. Mongolia shares the views on challenges and solutions of the fellow members expressed at the IOM high level segment yesterday climate impact on human mobility, a global call for solution. Mongolia applauds the IOM's recent initiative of global crisis response platform aimed at the root causes of the crisis and the strengthening resilience mechanism and the gender of migration research policy action lab led by Deputy Director General for Operation of IOM, aimed at addressing and facilitating gender inequality in migration. Similar to our fellow members, Mongolia actively cooperates with all the stakeholders and relevant international organizations, including IOM, in implementing the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, the SDGs, and the Government of Mongolia's Long-Term Programme Vision 2050. We express gratitude 
debt due to the IOM for providing technical and financial assistance to its members and observers to facilitate policy making in migration, resettlement, disappearance, and capacity building in this sector. Taking this opportunity, I would like to express our appreciation to the IOM Development Fund for its decision to implement new project to Mongolia, strengthening the cyber crime investigation on human trafficking in Mongolia this year. Mongolia has demonstrated its commitment to prioritizing migration by incorporating the protection of migrants' human rights and maximizing the positive impact of migration is the key issue in the national development agenda. IOM has been a valuable partner in supporting the government's effort to improve migration management, enhance capacity, the border management and counter traffic. I thank you very much. Thank you. Now the floor, please, to the distinguished representative of the United Kingdom. Muchas gracias, señor vice presidente, and a very warm welcome to our director general, the uh, first proper council, and thank you very much for the very nice hat, <laughs> DJ, which turns out not only to be a very effective way of keeping warm on a very cold morning run, um, but extremely stylish too, proud to wear it. Um, and also my congratulations to my dear German colleague on her election as chair. I'm sure she'll be fantastic. Wish her well as well. And let me start also by um, welcoming, as you might imagine, uh, the appointment of the great Samo Farah as your first goodwill ambassador. What better choice, indeed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that. What, better, what better choice. Uh, he is a man of extraordinary commitment. And as you said yesterday, DG, an extraordinary life story which has inspired our nation uh, through the tale of a boy who was trafficked and who became a national hero uh, and indeed an international hero for his athletic achievements uh, and I think he'll be a fantastic ambassador for this organization a fantastic authentic voice against human trafficking uh, and a great exponent and symbol uh, of what migrants can achieve and what they can contribute uh, to all our societies. So thank you for the choice. Congratulations to you, uh, DG, but also to the organization and of course, to Samo himself. Um, Vice Chair, uh, it's now almost two months since Hamas's horrific terrorist attack on Israel. And let me say how grateful we are to the IAM staff for their continued dedication and vital work in the humanitarian response in Gaza. And let me also convey our nation's deepest condolences to the 108 United Nations staff who have now lost their lives in this conflict. We remember them all. We pay tribute to them all. We also welcome, like so many others here, the recent pause in hostilities in Gaza. Uh, and we are pleased that a further extension has been agreed. Hope they may be extended further. Uh, it's been a vital first step in getting all, all the hostages out and in getting humanitarian aid in to Gaza. But much, much more humanitarian aid is clearly needed, including fuel. Uh, and we hope that these efforts can continue if and when the current pause ends. Visiting Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories a few days ago, my new Foreign Secretary, David Cameron, uh, set out UK support for the Palestinian Authority, and for a two-state solution. As we look beyond the horrors of the current crisis to the future and to the security of both Israelis and Palestinians. And let me also thank you, DG, and your colleagues for your tireless efforts to support Ukrainians, particularly those displaced by Russia's unprovoked war of aggression. The UK aligns itself with the joint statement that's going to be made later today by my distinguished 
their Ukrainian colleague. As you recognize, DG, global displacement continues to rise at an extraordinary, unprecedented rate. At a time when the impact of climate change on human mobility only exacerbates the level of global need, it has never been more important to work together through the IOM, through your partner organizations to, to create comprehensive and effective solutions. We all have a responsibility to ensure that when a person migrates, they do so in a manner that is safe, <coughs> that is orderly, and that is regular. And international cooperation to that end remains essential, and let me pledge our support as UK to work with all our international partners on a whole-of-route approach to addressing the challenges of irregular migration. Because we need to work in complementarity to ensure that our development interventions address the root causes and that we help migrants avoid the risks associated with onward movements. The Global Compact for Migration provides for all of us an important framework for meeting these very objectives. So we welcome your role, role of the IOM, in driving forward the implementation of that compact. And we welcome the newly established Gender and Migration Research Policy Action Lab. So many of the challenges migrants face are dependent upon whether they are women or men, girls or boys. So it's vital to consider gender sensitivity, gender perspective, in our discussions on migration, and we look forward to further engagement with this initiative. We also remain committed to promoting strong internal justice mechanisms and prioritizing reform so that the IOM is well equipped and efficiently managed to respond to the growing needs. One of the key strategic challenges for the IOM remains how to strengthen its central functions while retaining the operational flexibility, which we all appreciate so much. We therefore encourage you, DG, and your colleagues to implement the recommendations in the UK's Central Assurance Assessment and the recent MOPAN. And we look forward to the new strategic approach beginning of next year. And last but far from least, another issue that's always going to be a priority for the UK, but if I may say, in particular, during these 16 days of activism on gender-based violence, is preventing sexual exploitation and abuse and sexual harassment. And you know, while we've seen significant investment and improvement in this area, we know that the Office of the Inspector General is operating at capacity, so we encourage a close focus on ensuring that it can continue to strengthen its efforts on this essential issue. So let me conclude by thanking you, DG, your leadership team, and all your staff for their continued commitment to migrants across the world. We owe you all a debt of thanks. Thank you, Ambassador. Please, the floor to the distinguished representative of Namibia. Thank you, Chair. Director General, members of the Council, distinguished delegates, Namibia aligns herself with a statement delivered by Rwanda and Zimbabwe on behalf of the Africa Group, and we take this opportunity to deliver a few remarks in our national capacity. We wish to extend our congratulations to the Chair and the Bureau on their election. Namibia assures you of her cooperation and commitment as you continue to guide the work of the IOM Council. Namibia takes note of the pro pro programmatic priority areas for the next strategic planning cycle covering 2024-2028 and commend the new administration for commencing with the review of the internal structures and processes of the organization to remain fit for purpose and to deliver on the priority areas in an effective and efficient manner. The work of IOM to support collaboration with diaspora groups to achieve development outcomes is commendable. Namibia is part of the effort 
to provide a framework for engagement with the diaspora, facilitating the exchange of ideas and expertise, creating opportunities for investment and fostering a sense of belonging and connection to the homeland, has developed a national plan, a national policy on Namibia diaspora. During the month of May this year, a multi-sectoral technical workshop took place to develop the implementation plan for the draft national policy on the Namibian diaspora. This was assisted by the IOM. This event was supported by IOM within the framework of the EU-funded project Southern Africa Migration Management. Namibia welcomes the launch of the Gender and Migration Research Policy Action Lab, which focuses on impact research for supporting gender responsive policies, operations, programming, and practice in migration. Skilled female migrant workers often face difficulties in finding employment commensurate with their education when re relocating to a new country. They are offered jobs in the informal economy, such as domestic work or care work. These systematic gender inequalities produce de-skilled and unemployed female migrant workers. It further crushes their hope to regain their professional status. We trust that this initiative will facilitate evidence-based policy and action to address gender inequalities among female, female migrant workers. On climate change, Namibia recalls the statement by the Director General at the Africa Climate Change Summit in September this year that, that and I quote, we have officially entered the era of climate migration, unquote, as well as her remarks on Monday that climate and environmentally induced disasters cause more human mobility than violence and conflict, unquote. Mr. Chair, Namibia is, a vulnerable, is vulnerable to natural hazards or disasters, such as floods and drought, and it is the second most arid country in sub-Saharan Africa. Therefore, climate-induced migration has become a reality as increased droughts, severe weather, as well as wildfires associated with global warming are on an increase. The efforts by IOM on developing and scaling systems that are able to efficiently meet the additional humanitarian needs due to sudden disasters induced by climate change are therefore welcomed. Namibia continues to call upon fellow member states to actively participate in the ICJ advisory proceedings on climate change. And in the same spirit, we call for urgent action from all member states to reduce the adverse impact of climate change on lives, livelihoods, and, e and the economies of the world. Finally, Namibia commends the Director General and her entire team at the IOM Secretariat for the operational support they continue to provide to member states around the world. I thank you very much. Thank you very much. With my apologies, because I switched the, the list of uh, speakers, now the floor is with distinguished representative of Sudan. Thank you, Vice Chair. Sudan aligns itself with the Arab and African group statements. And of course, it gives me great pleasure to congratulate the first female lady director of IOM, Ms. Amy Pop. We have great confidence in her capable leadership as she is presiding over the organization through these exceptionally demanding times. Vice Chair, allow me to commend the work undertaken by the IOM at the front line of this unprecedented dire humanitarian crisis in my country, Sudan. And it is a scale-up crisis response plan that aims at saving lives and responding to needs of crisis-affected populations. Yet, I must highlight that this plan remained severely under-resourced and underfunded. Sudan as an origin, transit, and destination country for migration, with its strategic geographical location as the center of the Horn of Africa, 
has always played a crucial role in migration governance, not only in the region, but globally. As Khartoum, our capital, hosts the African Continental Center, known as ROC, on combating against irregular migration, smuggling, and trafficking in person and transborder crimes, in partnership with IOM and other regional and international actors. Regrettably, I must convey that all these promising efforts are now at hold due to the insurgence of the Janjaweed militia erupted in my country since mid last April, which has dragged the country into a dire humanitarian situation and with it is have severe repercussions in the region, which includes inter alia the increased waves of migrants. As you are aware, the situation in Sudan remains there. The rebel Janjaweed militia has been committing horrifying violations and crimes against humanity for the past seven months, which resulted in significant increase in the number of refugees, migrants, and internally displaced persons. As more than six million people have been forced to flee their homes, including more than five million internally displaced persons, and over 1.4 million who have crossed the borders to neighboring countries and half of the Sudanese population are now in need for humanitarian assistance. In this regard, I must express our deep gratitude for the neighboring sisterly countries for receiving those Sudanese who have fled their homes seeking protection. Mr. Vice Chair, Sudan highly counting on the role of the IOM in responding to the influx of internal displaced people resulting in a very complex humanitarian situation and the shortage of the necessary public services and resources and host communities in addition of the significant damage of, infra of the in uh, infrastructure, the collapse of the health system, banking services, etc., and other public facilities. Mr. Vice Chair, Sudan calls upon IOM to pay special attention to the Sudanese migrants in different countries and work with the concerned governments to protect their rights, as the Sudanese people who have fled their homes forcibly are facing many obstacles in their, in their, in their migration procedures, lack of opportunities and social and economic integration, which felt in many cases. Mr. Vice Chair, we reiterate that the government of Sudan is fully committed to facilitate the work of the humanitarian actors. We equally appeal on the, on the international community to support the efforts of the IOM and provi provide more flexible, more flexible funding to ensure the success of the announced plans and projects. I'm referring here to the scale-up plans for response. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. And now please the floor to the distinguished representative of Thailand. Uh, thank you, Chairpersons. Director General, Excellencies, distinguished delegates. Thailand allies itself with the statement of the Asia Pacific Group and wish to congratulate Madam Chair and the member, member of the Bureau on the election to this meeting. And we also wish to welcome Director General to her first IOM Council. We thank the Director General for her presentations and welcome her initiative and priority, including, and, including on climate change and its impact on human mobility, promoting legal pathway and strengthening partnership with an overall emphasis on innovation, data and people. For Thailand, regular pathway is one of the most important tools to manage migration governance. Not only does it help prevent migrants from falling prey to trafficking, smuggling, or other form of exploitation. It also allows migrants access to services and benefits that are entitled to. Thailand will continue to explore expanding and improving regular pathway, particularly through bilateral MOU or labor cooperations with countries of origins and country of destination, and to work with IOM on this area of mutual interest. Thailand continues to attach importance to protection of victims of trafficking and vulnerable migrants. 
We appreciate IOM continued support for the government in taking care of migrants in the detention center and government shelter, as well as IOM efforts in facilitating conversation among government and relevant embassies and consular posts in Bangkok to promote cooperation for safe return, referral, and protection of victims of trafficking by transnational criminal syndicate, particularly those involved in online scam. We share the view that data is key to an evidence-based policy. Therefore, we value the joint review of where we stand in migration management as reflected in the Migration Governance Indicator Report. We look forward to co-organize the national seminars to take stock of its findings and discuss on the way forward based on the whole of government and whole of society approach. Thailand is also committed to implement the joint project on promoting evidence-based migration discourse and media reporting in Thailand, which continue our pledge at the IMRF in 2022 to promote public perception regarding the positive contribution of migrants. IOM and Thailand are long-standing partner as a host of IOM country office and a regional office, as well as one of the GCM champion countries. Thailand stand ready to support and facilitate IOM work at national, regional, and international level, including to the upcoming regional review of the GCM and the making of the new host country agreement. I thank you. Thank you very much. Please, the floor with the senior representative of Slovakia. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, Slovakia aligns itself uh, to the statement delivered by the EU and uh, also to the statement of Ukraine, which will be delivered later on. Allow me also to make a couple of comments uh, in my national capacity to highlight the points which are important uh, to my delegation and indeed country. First of all, my delegation offers uh, its repeated congratulations to the Director General on assuming her post uh, this October and appreciates her first appearance at the Council in the new role. Uh, we thank her not only for delivering her report to this Council, but also for her active dialogue and interaction with the IOM membership in recent months. We see this as an un unequivocal sign of her energy and determination to cope with the ever-increasing size of the migration challenges, and you can rely on uh, our support, Director General. Chair, uh, the importance of IOM's mandate uh, and its delivery cannot be overstated, especially at present when the Russian war in Ukraine is further unfolding, and we are witnessing an unprecedented humanitarian crisis in Gaza following the despicable terrorist attack of Hamas from 7th of October. Uh, my delegation uh, commends the IOM for swiftly taking a major role in the collective humanitarian response. Slovakia has always uh, striven to shoulder its part and act swiftly and according to needs. This has been the case in Ukraine, this is the case in Gaza. Uh, I'm proud to uh, mention uh, that uh, Slovakia has recently decided to contribute additionally 100,000 euro to the World Food Program to help provide food supplies to the population of Gaza in context of the aforementioned crisis. The situation in Ukraine as a result of the ongoing Russian aggression remains of utmost concern with its, with its repercussions still in place across the wider region, the world, and certainly Slovakia as a directly bordering country. Since the outset of the crisis, the concentrated support of my government to the neighbor in need included humanitarian and other assistance, as well as receiving and hosting tens of thousands, mostly women and children, uh, forced to flee their homes and eventually their country. Slovakia commits to stay further on this humanitarian course and help the Ukrainians through these terrible testing times. Here, we cannot but thank again the IOM for providing assistance to affected persons in Ukraine and also to those arriving in Slovakia. We see in you a valued partner and a collaborator. Chair, uh, in the course of this year, uh, it was also my country that had experienced a sharp increase in the irregular migration flows, which had often been accompanied by criminally organized migrant uh, trafficking of people activities. We continue to be concerned about risks, including for migrants, such, such trends may further create. This heightened migratory pressure brings again to the fore uh, of our consideration the need of a strengthened dialogue with countries of transit and origin. Returns should also have their acknowledged place in such a dialogue as one of the legitimate tools for easing the pressure. 
We recognize that in real life, refugees and migrant flows uh, can be only hardly separated, but still it is important to uphold the distinction between their definitions and consequently between the rights and obligations that apply along their routes. To close, I would like to thank again the Director General for her initiative and consistency in reaching out to the IOM membership and presenting her vision and priorities. My delegation is confident that they will make a crucial contribution to the IOM activity in the field, as well as strengthen its in-house management. We all will profit, the IOM executive, its mandate, uh, the member states to whom it serves, and above all, the people on move and in need of our help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Please the floor to the distinguished representative of Cyprus. Thank you, Vice Chair. Cyprus aligns itself with the statement delivered on behalf of the EU. We thank you, Director General, for your report, and we express our support to your vision, your reforms, and to the invaluable work of the IOM and all its staff. Today, we all bear witness to unprecedented numbers of forcibly displaced and vulnerable persons. The causes are known, economic disparities, political instability, armed conflicts, human rights abuses, climate change and resource scarcity. The ever-growing intensity of these causes propels millions to seek safety across land borders and seas, risking their lives, but also placing immense strain on international humanitarian systems and host countries alike. Since last year, we have seen the emergence of new conflicts and the intensification of existing ones. The grave humanitarian situation in Gaza, the raging war against Ukraine, the civil war in Syria, and the conflict in Sudan are but a few examples. Looking ahead, we are faced with grim forecasts. As the number of vulnerable persons seeking to move in search of refuge and a better future will continue to rise, the multifaceted challenges will need transformative and impactful solutions seeking to address the root causes of migration. At the same time, we need to double down on our efforts to maximize effectiveness when ensuring the protection of refugees and migrant lives and rights, when fostering integration and inclusivity in host societies, and when addressing the rise of anti-immigrant sentiment. Excellencies, Cyprus remains a frontline state with disproportionately large migratory pressures in terms of the size of its population. The scale of the situation has required the continuous adaptation of our national policies and the strengthening of our resources. In the past years, Cyprus has enhanced its legal framework and capacities, opened new avenues for regular migration and stepped up efforts against smugglers and human traffickers. At the same time, greater attention has also been given to the timely management of asylum applications and procedures related to the returns of third country nationals to their countries of origin. Cooperating with countries within and outside the EU to better manage migratory flows is a critical priority for us. Respect for international law and EU obligations stand as our compass. The active engagement of the IOM's Cyprus office and its targeted programs, especially the assisted voluntary return and reintegration programs, have been indispensable to us, and we would like to express our gratitude to the organization for its help. Chair, given the magnitude of the challenges in front of us, the IOM's role in strengthening global migration governance is pivotal as we endeavour to fulfil the commitments under the Global Compact for Migration in order to meet the needs of vulnerable migrants and address the causes of forced displacement, the determination of the IOM to spearhead approaches that harness the positive impact of migration worldwide while providing crucial on-the-ground support for displaced population has our wholehearted support. I thank you. Thank you very much. The floor to the representative of Bangladesh. Chair, Director General, Deputy Director General, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates. At the outset, I congratulate the Chair, the Vice Chairs, and the members of the Bureau on their election. We extend our warm welcome to our new Director General, Amy Pope, and express our confidence that her leadership will add further impetus to the work of the IOM to advance human and orderly migration. We find her report, maiden report, full of good and timely 
ideas. Mr. Chair, migrants fill labor market gaps owing to demographic realities. They bring innovation and improve business practices, social and cultural capital to the destination countries. However, migrants continue to experience racial profiling and discrimination, xenophobia and other inhuman treatment. We urge states to guarantee the rights of migrant workers. Considering the contribution of migrants in the respective economies, states should consider entering into social security agreements to ensure that gaps in their social security coverage are addressed, portability of such coverage are ensured. While we appreciate IOM for its continuous support to vulnerable migrants in their return to their country of origin, we would seek greater focus on return and readmission in the works of IOM. Efforts of countries of origin to reintegrate returning migrants through financial assistance and on skilling and reskilling require enhanced international support through IOM's operations. Chair, Bangladesh continued to host around 1.2 million Rohingyas for over six years, and yet not a single Rohingya could be sent back to their homeland. We witness continued funding gap in the UN's humanitarian response, the Joint Response Plan, JRP, for the Rohingyas. According to the latest report, the JRP has been funded only 34%, leading to a 33% reduction in food rations in the first half of the year. This shortage of funding puts additional burden on Bangladesh. The international community must undertake equal responsibility of the Rohingya crisis on the basis of principle of equitable burden and responsibility sharing. We want IOM to continue to keep the matter in its agenda of high importance and also to work towards in keeping it in the agenda at the global level. As we are committed to safe and voluntary return of the Rohingyas to Myanmar, we urge the international and regional actors and partners, including IOM, to contribute to creating right conditions for return in Rakhine, develop programs for reintegration, invest in livelihood options and infrastructures there, so as to make pilot repatriation efforts made by Bangladesh and Myanmar and supported by China successful. Mr. Chair, as we appreciate the general direction and strategies indicated in the report by the Director General, we highlight the following aspects in particular. While IOM continues uh, its crisis response role, it should work with mandated UN agencies, the international community, and the local authorities and NGOs to monitor drivers of vulnerability and marginalization, note early warning signals, and work towards mitigating drivers of displacement before they force people to move. First, displacement doesn't happen suddenly and in vacuum. B, as internal displacements from climatic and environmental reasons are exceeding those caused by conflicts and violences, IOM ought to consider proportionate and higher allocation of resources towards these drivers of host migration. C, IOM to seek to mobilize unearmarked funds beyond governmental resources with only a small portion to be paid up front and the remaining to be contributed only when emergency response scenario demand funds. While IOM works to develop digital solutions to offer prospective migrants access to more efficient and economic channels, such as its PATH platform, it should collaborate more with UN ODC and other mandated UN agencies, regional consultative processes, and regional association organizations for effectiveness of its programs. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Please, we have still 15 more minutes and we have still six speakers. Uh, I remind you, please, the use of the responsible of the time. The representative of Peru. Muchas gracias, señor vicepresidente. Quisiera iniciar nuestra intervención expresando nuestra felicitación a la embajadora Caterine Stasch de Alemania por haber sido elegida presidenta del Consejo. Felicitación que hacemos extensiva al embajador Yun como vicepresidente y al embajador Bayobji de Túnez como relator, a quien le damos la bienvenida a la mesa. Para el Perú es un honor haber sido elegido segundo vicepresidente. Asumimos nuestro compromiso renovando nuestra voluntad de contribuir con el crecimiento de la organización y agradecemos la confianza de los Estados miembros. De igual manera, Quisiéramos reiterar el saludo realizado por el canciller del Perú a la directora general Amy Pope, a quien luego de asumir el cargo en octubre 
ha propuesto una dinámica agenda de trabajo para acercar la organización a los Estados miembros y a los principales beneficiarios, los migrantes en el terreno. Igualmente, agradecemos a la Secretaría de la OIM por la organización de la presente reunión y nos sumamos a la intervención realizada por Argentina en nombre del GRULAC. Señor Vicepresidente, respecto al reporte anual presentado por la Directora General, destacamos las prioridades estratégicas identificadas por la nueva Administración, que traen al centro de la atención de la organización esfuerzos para salvar vidas y proteger a las personas en movimiento, así como soluciones para desplazamientos con un enfoque en migración por motivos climáticos y facilitando vías de migración regular. Igualmente, valoramos positivamente la actuación de la OIM durante el presente año en respuesta a las crecientes crisis globales y humanitarias que han aumentado en la, en la mayor parte de las regiones, generando mayores desafíos para los países de acogida. Las nuevas corrientes migratorias han convertido al Perú en un país de destino y tránsito de migrantes, planteando nuevos retos a la gestión migratoria que deben ser contemplados de una perspectiva regional y global. Desde esta perspectiva, el Gobierno del Perú mantiene una posición proactiva en favor del registro e inclusión de los migrantes en nuestro territorio. Por ello, y a efectos de favorecer las coordinaciones nacionales, se viene impulsando el trabajo de la Mesa de Trabajo Intersectorial para la Gestión Migratoria. Igualmente, el Estado peruano viene desarrollando un activo papel en mecanismos regionales, principalmente a través de la presidencia pro tempore de la Conferencia Suramericana para las Migraciones, a través de la cual se han impulsado diversos talleres y diálogos relativos a la migración, medio ambiente, desastres y cambio climático. Celebramos particularmente que la directora general inaugurará la próxima sesión plenaria de la conferencia que se realizará en Lima la próxima semana. Señor Vicepresidente, al reiterar el compromiso con los migrantes, manifestado por el ministro de Relaciones Exteriores del Perú en el segmento de alto nivel que ha pre precedido este debate general, expresamos nuestros deseos para que la OIM continúe su liderazgo firme y especializado en beneficio de todos los migrantes en situación de necesidad. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Please the floor to representative of Malawi. Thank you, Chairperson, for giving my delegation the floor. Allow me, Chair, on behalf of the government and the people of the Republic of Malawi, to extend our congratulations to Ambassador Catalina Stach and members of the entire Bureau on their election. Chairperson, allow me to also congratulate the new IOM Director General, Ms. Amy Pop, on her assumption of duty on 1st October 2023. We wish the Chair, the DG, and their Teams every success in delivering on the mandate of the IOM. Be assured of Malawi's support. Malawi wishes to align itself with the African group statements delivered by Rwanda and Zimbabwe. Chairperson, Malawi welcomes the report of the DG and took note of the proposal for the 2024 budget, which comes at a time when the world is faced with multifaceted challenges to have resulted in forced displacements and movements of many people across the world, including Africa, and Malawi has not been spared. The Director General's commitment to prioritize, to prioritize climate change induced mobility in the programming fills us with great hope and inspirations. Chairperson, Malawi being a host to migrants from different countries, takes note that the budget provides for planned initiatives, including the reintegration assistance to retinees, host communities and other displaced populations through the sharing of information on retinee-related stability in countries like Burundi. Malawi notes that there is a dwindling funding globally and recognizes that this is posing a great risk to the displaced person in a country which has challenges in fulfilling its budgetary commitments for its population. Malawi therefore makes a call to IOM to extend this assistance to her, considering that the country still hosts Burundians, most of whom have expressed an interest to return home. 
My delegation takes note of the fact that the funding available to the IOM falls short of its needs to adequately deliver its mandate, and we are grateful for the allocation to supporting health promotion and assistance for migrants in Malawi within the Sadak region. We also take note of IOM's strategy 2, 3, 5, and 11, which targets migration management in Southern Africa, aimed at improving migration management through evidence-based management strategies and policies to address mixed migration challenges, including improving protection frameworks for migrants in situations of vulnerability. It is along this vein that we ask the DG to strengthen the capacity of the sub-region office in Pretoria to be able to effectively support member states on migration issues. Chairperson, Malawi, like most African countries, has a large youth population which is creating pressure on the labor market. Malawi desires to benefit from the labor migration program, labor employment and mobility action in Africa so that its governance and regulation of labor migration and mobility is strengthened with the view of achieving decent employment for the youth. Technical assistance from IOM on labor export, therefore, would be ideal. Chairperson, Malawi is a disaster-prone country with common hazards such as frauds, cyclones, prolonged dry spells and droughts, just to mention but a few. The frequency and magnitude of these disasters and extreme weather have been on the increase in recent years, resulting in migration and increased internal displacement of uh, the population. These frequent extreme weather events and disasters have resulted in huge cost for recovery, rehabilitation, in the construction, forcing the country to reallocate the limited budgetary resources from other development needs. Earlier this year, as we may call in 2023, in March, Malawi experienced one of its worst disasters. Uh, over 2,267,458 people, of whom 1,110,639 are male and 1,167,000 819 females were affected following the impact of uh, Tropical Cyclone Freddy. 659,278 people of whom 336,252 are females and 323 and 26 males are displaced. Over 56% of the affected are children and 7.2 are persons living with a disability. The disaster caused over 679 deaths and 2,178 injuries with more than 537 people missing. And these are big numbers for countries small like Malawi. Chairperson, given the increased trend of extreme weather events at the continental and regional levels resulting in illegal migration and internal displacement, and they needed to facilitate safer migration and provision of assistance to internally displaced persons, Malawi would like to join the important initiative on the Grob Call for Solutions. Malawi notes, among others, the important role of global, continental, and regional integration and cooperation in dealing with these issues in the work of crime, climate change, environment degradation, conflict, and economic shocks. Malawi also notes the need for comprehensive legal and policy frameworks to facilitate issues of migration and internal displacement. This should be coupled with capacity building and institutional strengthening of the national structures that deal with migration and displacement. Furthermore, Malawi joins all member states on the need for strengthened information sharing and management at national, regional, continental, and global levels. Migration and displacement tracking information is vital for informed policy formulation in decision making as well as interventions. My delegation welcomes the IOM's Migration, Environment, Climate Change, and Risk Reduction Cluster in the program and budget for 2024, whose aim under the strength and leadership of human mobility in Southern Africa is to assist member states like Malawi on the impacts of climate change in human, mobi human mobility through closer collaboration with other stakeholders. Indeed, we hope that this will ensure that human mobility induced by climate change is considered in policy, legislation, and programming. 
Malawi, as one of the champion countries, is committed to continue taking a leading role in rending its voice in ensuring that in the face of climate change, the utmost efforts to preserve and protect the rights, welfare, and the security of migrants and people on the move are done. And other member states to join us in this shared commitment. Chairperson, allow me to conclude by stating that Malawi is grateful for the technical and financial support landed by the International Organization for Migration to the government of Malawi in areas of capacity building, provision of assistance to migrants and internally displaced persons, among others. I thank you, Chair. Thanks. Norway, please. Chair, Director General, Excellencies, distinguished delegates. Norway is proud to be a committed partner to the IOM, an organization with increased reach, influence, and importance to migrants all over the world. At this first council session since her election, let me first congratulate Amy Pope on assuming her role. We have full confidence in your leadership and believe that under your guidance, the IOM will continue to excel in its mission. We look forward to the appointments of the deputies in the months to come. It's evident to us that the coming years will be demanding, the deplorable situation in Gaza being only one of our many challenges. There will be escalating humanitarian needs, stemming from climate change, food insecurity and conflict, and many often compound drivers. We have taken note of IOM's record high budget for next year. While this is a reflection of the growing humanitarian needs around the world, it is also at the same time a demonstration how the IOM has become and is increasingly an agile, efficient, capable humanitarian partner to your donors. Norway remains committed to provide unearmarked support to the IOM to provide continuity, predictability, and flexibility. This is crucial. We are also particularly dedicated to our partnership in the humanitarian field. This year, we have provided substantial humanitarian support to protracted displacement situations, such as in Afghanistan, the Horn of Africa, or Yemen. We have supported work for durable solutions for IDPs in Iraq and responded to many new crises, such as the earthquake in Turkey or the Kakovka Dam destruction in Ukraine. Thanking the Director General for her update, we would like to highlight a few priorities for Norway. We appreciate the IOM's involvement in the action agenda on internal displacement. IDPs being a particular priority also for Norway. We salute the continued effort to strengthen alignment and cooperation with your sister UN organizations, in particular the UNHCR in the field. Norway appreciates your focus on evidence-based policy development, not least the strengthening of the Global Data Center and the GenMig initiative. Norway recognizes our obligation under the Global Compact for Migration to facilitate legal pathways and of the inclusion of migrants into our society. At the same time, we have an imperative to practice effective return policies in order to deter irregular migration, which undermines the positive movements we like to see. Norway shares in the fight against deploring practices of trafficking. Our government has initiated programs which integrate humanitarian and development support for displaced populations, migrants and host communities, believing that we can build resilience and sustainable livelihoods together, in turn contributing to durable solutions. Norway hopes to be able to be a partner to the IOM in the years to come in decreasing the forced displacement globally, increasing the regular positive human mobility for our shared prosperity. Thank you. Thank you. The floor, please, to the representative of Ghana.
Thank you, Vice Chairperson, for giving me the floor. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, my delegation joins earlier speakers in congratulating Her Excellency Dr. Katerina Stasch of Germany on her election as Chairperson of the Bureau, as well as all the elected members of the Bureau to steer the affairs of the Council onto the next regular session. My delegation is confident that with their professional qualities and wealth of experience in IOM matters, they will execute their mandate effectively and guide our collective efforts. Be assured of Ghana's support. Our sincere appreciation also goes out to the outgoing chairperson, His Excellency Dr. Lansani Berry of Sierra Leone for the tremendous work he carried out during his tenure, particularly overseeing the successful process and election of the first female Director General of the IOM, Ms. Amy Pope, to lead the organization after almost 72 years of its existence. We are keen about this new trajectory and we look forward to delivering on the promise of migration together. Ghana aligns itself with the statement delivered on Monday by the Republic of Rwanda on behalf of the African group, which clearly articulated the various initiatives being carried out by, the, by IOM, such as saving lives and protecting people on the move, driving solutions to displacement, climate action, and facilitating regular migration pathways. We retreat the need for greater collective collaboration in the implementation of these initiatives. Vice Chairperson, this year has been an impactful year on Ghana's migration calendar. As a country that strongly supports the Global Compact on Migration, Ghana engaged in several activities to advance the objectives of the compact. Under the leadership of Ghana's presidency of the Climate Vulnerable Forum, and with the immense support of the IOM, a priority area was identified to expand the support for climate change migrants and displaced persons and leverage migrants and diaspora communities to play a positive role in the fight against climate change. This priority area led to the launch of the Migrants for Climate Initiative, which considers shaping a new positive narrative on migration, where migrants, their communities, as well as the diaspora, play a positive role in the fight against climate change and environmental degradation through local sustainable development projects or initiatives. The Migrant for Climate Initiative is aligned to objective two and 19 of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration. One of the activities under this initiative is the Migrants for Climate Award, which identifies an award through a competitive process innovative and dynamic initiatives led by migrants and diasporas towards climate action based on their direct experience of environmental impact of climate change. I'm pleased to inform that with the splendid support of the France Chairmanship of the Global Forum on Migration and Development, the maiden edition of the award has recently concluded. The winning initiative was Ruth de la, de la Jacinthe Do from Benin which showcased collaboration between local communities, migrants, returnees, and diasporas who developed the collection of water hyacinth, which are obstacles to water circulation and proliferate algae, and transformed them into eco-products such as hats, compost, and renewable energy. The activity created green jobs and ecotourism, thereby reducing green gas emissions, flood risk, improvement in the quality of water and land regeneration. The award is expected to be further explored and replicated in the coming years, and we urge all member states to get involved when the next call for nominations is launched. Vice Chair, Ghana has made tremendous progress in strengthening its relationship with the Ghanaian diaspora. With the assistance of the IOM country office in Ghana, a diaspora engagement policy, the first of such in the history of the country was developed and has been recently approved by the government of Ghana to provide the necessary framework within which the Ghanaian diaspora can be constructively engaged in political, social, economic, and cultural discourse towards the effective mobilization and coordination of their contributions to the national development process.
The recent launch of the IOM study on diaspora and transnational identities showcased that migrant and diaspora communities play a pivotal role in enhancing global interconnectedness by fostering international ties and knowledge transfer, driving this development on various fronts. According to the World Bank, migrants are estimated to generate 9.4% of the global GDP. Combined formal and informal remittance transfer could amount to one trillion US dollars annually, a figure which clearly indicates that migration is not a problem, but an opportunity. My delegation therefore welcomes IOM's efforts to develop digital solutions to give prospective migrants access to more efficient and economical pathways to migration. This would greatly reduce incidents of human trafficking and migrant smuggling, and ultimately protect people on the move to promote development, prosperity, and progress. I thank you. Thank you. Please, South Sudan. Vice Chairperson, South Sudan aligns itself with the African group statements delivered by Zimbabwe and Rwanda, respectively. South Sudan congratulates Mrs. Amy Pope for her elections as Director General of IOM, making history to be the first woman DG of IOM. While we are sure here of our unwavering support and cooperation, we wish her and her able team a better success in fulfilling her new vision in delivering on the mandate of the IOM. We further extend our congratulations uh, to the new chair and her office and the outgoing chair for his able leadership. My delegations underscores and highly commends various crisis responses IOM has been implementing in South Sudan through its efficient office in South Sudan. My country, as my country has been ranked the second most vulnerable country globally impacted by conflict and climate change. Although the war in South Sudan formally ended with a peace agreement in 2018, climate shocks in form of unusually intense rains, floods, droughts have continued to contribute in significant forced mobility of people. More than 7.8 million people in South Sudan are projected to fall short of their minimum food needs by this year, 2023. This is a substantial increase from the 6.3 million people who face food insecurity in 2022. The floods and droughts highlight a constant threat to a country lacking the infrastructure to respond, adapt, and mitigate. Over two million people have been internally displaced due to flooding and drought alone. You had the opportunity, Madam DG, to stand on the situation on the ground in South Sudan when you visited my country. The ongoing war in, in Sudan has already impacted the situation in South Sudan, as I alluded to during the panel on Monday. Those who have crossed to South Sudan coming to an already fragile situation need urgent support in terms of food, medicine, water, shelter, which the government of South Sudan cannot afford to provide alone. Climate factors have further significant implications for peace and security in South Sudan. Increasing competition between pastoralists and farmers, forcing many populations to migrate to highlands, resulting in the risk of cattle raiding, causing communal conflict, displacement, and formation of armed groups between newcomers and the indigenous of the highlands. By chairperson, South Sudan need technical assistance and capacity building, lifting of imposed sanctions, which have further hindered the capacity and ability of our government to enable it to respond as a host, origin, and transit country for migrants, refugees, IDPs, returnees, as well as to take informed 
scientific-based decisions on climate shocks and emergencies. We appeal to the IOM and international partners to continue making funds available for the countries facing climate shocks, hosting refugees, migrant IDPs and returnees, including South Sudan, and support member states, particularly sending a state to put in place mechanisms that address factors forcing people to migrate. South Sudan encourages IOM to explore new avenues to fill the current financial gaps. We believe that humanitarian assistance should not be seen in isolation of development as the two are interrelated. One of the main factors for migration is underdevelopment. We further appeal that humanitarian assistance should not be subjected to any conditionalities, earmarked or politicized, and the already existing crisis should not be forgotten. Previous commitment should be honored and fulfilled. In conclusion, South Sudan thanks and appreciates IOM and international partners for the support they have rendered and continue to render to migrant and to all affected population in South Sudan and across the globe. I thank you, Vice President. Thank you. Colombia, please. Muchas gracias, señor presidente y apreciado embajador Luis Chukiwara. Colombia se suma a la declaración regional del GRULAC pronunciada por el embajador Federico Villegas el primer día del Consejo. Señora directora Amy Pope, como líderes en materia de política exterior feminista, permítame reiterar las felicitaciones por su designación como la primera mujer directora de la OIM. Tenemos la certeza de que su compromiso se traducirá en que la organización tendrá una base sólida y de pleno respeto a las políticas de igualdad de género y estaremos a su disposición para apoyarla a alcanzar este fin. Colombia está profundamente agradecida con la OIM por su constante respaldo para enfrentar los múltiples desafíos para el manejo de los flujos migratorios así como para el fortalecimiento de políticas públicas que contribuyan a materializar nuestra aspiración de paz total. Por eso, resaltamos y agradecemos que en el presupuesto para el año 2024, la OIM le haya dado un enfoque especial al fortalecimiento institucional para apoyar a las víctimas del conflicto armado en Colombia, que permitirá fomentar la reconciliación y la no repetición del conflicto, protegiendo los derechos de las víctimas, sosteniendo procesos integrales de memoria, verdad y justicia, y promoviendo la confianza y la cohesión social entre los individuos, las comunidades y los agentes de los sectores público y privado. Aprovecho la oportunidad para agradecer a los diferentes países que a través de sus contribuciones permitirán el desarrollo de este proyecto. Señora directora, en esta línea permítame agradecer el énfasis que usted hizo en su presentación del primer día, donde señaló la importancia que la OIM le asignará al desplazamiento interno que en nuestro país afecta a cerca de 5 millones de personas. Al igual que ustedes, nuestra misión seguirá trabajando de manera conjunta con el asesor especial para soluciones duraderas para el desplazamiento interno, señor Robert Piper. Estamos adelantando importantes actividades junto con nuestra unidad de víctimas. Y en ese sentido, permítanme compartir con ustedes que recientemente el secretario general de las Naciones Unidas, Antonio Guterres, reconoció el liderazgo de Colombia en su copresidencia del Grupo de Amigos para soluciones al desplazamiento interno que ejercemos de manera conjunta con Canadá. El secretario general también resaltó que el Plan Nacional de Desarrollo 2022-2026 se oriente a garantizar que dos millones de personas víctimas de desplazamiento forzado interno superen su vulnerabilidad actual, lo cual refleja el compromiso del país con la búsqueda de soluciones duraderas. 
Señora directora, usted conoce de cerca los múltiples desafíos de Colombia. Lo escuchamos el día de ayer en la intervención de la viceministra de Asuntos Multilaterales, que participó en el segmento de alto nivel sobre migración y cambio climático. Y lo escuchamos también esta mañana de usted sobre los flujos migratorios en el tapón del Darién. Seguimos comprometidos con la OIM y esperamos seguir contando con su apoyo y el de la comunidad internacional para continuar nuestra política de recepción, integración y pleno respeto de manera decidida a los derechos humanos de los migrantes que llegan a nuestro país. Muchas gracias. Gracias, embajador. Please define the comments of our director general. First of all, um, uh, permit me to make some final comments, recognizing we might actually lose our interpreters in the midst of them. But if I could just acknowledge um, the, the impact, the work that you all are doing and your importance to us. I'll start, start with Austria, who has been a founding partner of IOM and continues um, to provide an essential support for us to operate around the world. We appreciate that. And we recognize that you're bringing a, a comprehensive, roots-based approach to migration, and we commend you for your leadership on that issue. Mongolia, I'd recognize the uh, tremendous work that you're doing to counter the trafficking of persons and to bring a rights-based approach to border management. Um, the work you're doing on data collection uh, for migrants who are coming through and engaging your diaspora um, is work that we are um, stand ready to continue to support, recognizing its importance. Um, the United Kingdom, well, I wish I could personally acknowledge the um, uh, athletic efforts of the esteemed uh, representative from the United Kingdom. Um, I'll, I'll note it in, in absentia um, and, recommend, and commend the UK for its continued support of IOM's work around the world, particularly on international development. Um, and to note that we're very grateful for the uh, recent analysis and assessment done by the FCDO on IOM's um, structure and use of its resources, and note that uh, we will very uh, closely follow the recommendations that were received therein. <clears throat> on Namibia, I'd acknowledge the tremendous work that you are doing to advocate um, on behalf of especially vulnerable communities already impacted by climate change. And, uh, and note that that is tremendously important in the region as a whole, not just in, in your own country, as, as you've acknowledged. I want to congratulate you on the achievement of your own national migration policy and for drafting your national diaspora policy, both of which are um, issues issues that we are quite eager to, to work with you on. Um, for Sudan, I want to start by offering um, our condolences for the thousands of lives that have been lost in the conflict in Sudan, to note the millions of people who are displaced as Sudan is now the country with the highest displacement in the world, and to note that there are millions more who are still in need. I'd like to appreciate the efforts that the government of Sudan has made to provide access for humanitarian actors to respond to the crisis and to improve access for them to affected populations, and collectively for all those in the room to recognize the enormous outstanding needs that remain in uh, the country of Sudan and encourage all members to take note and, where possible, to provide additional resources. To the government of Thailand, we thank you for being one of the champion countries to support the Global Compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration. And to thank you for contributing to the UN Migration Multipartner Trust Fund um, across the board, whether it's on labor mobility or support for communities impacted by disaster and climate change. You've been a, a leader. We appreciate your work. And including on the Migration Media Academy, whose focus um, is to improve the narrative around migration. So thank you for the work that you are doing. Um, and, and a personal note of thanks for your support for improving and updating our host country agreement and for mentioning it here. To Slovakia, I would appreciate um, the work that Slovakia and the hospitality that Slovakia is providing to people who have been fleeing Ukraine, uh, despite, despite the, um, the small size of your country you provided 
tremendous support and continue to do so. We also acknowledge the reform of your policies on labor mobility and appreciate the measures that you're taking to attract and retain talent from around the world. Um, to Cyprus, I note that um, Cyprus, again, as a smaller nation, is taking on a tremendous responsibility when it comes to um, the movement of persons, um, especially through irregular channels, in this case by boat. That number has increased 100 percent since the um, uh, situation, the conflict in the Middle East. Um, we know also the work that you're doing to provide voluntary return for people um, and the support you're providing to vulnerable migrants. So we want to take um, note of that ac across the board work, the, the challenges that that has provided, but also the very comprehensive approach that you're taking to respond to that situation. To Bangladesh, who is a true champion um, for the Global Compact for Migration, um, we want to just highlight everything you've done to, to lead on that issue, um, including internally within your government, the development of your own national reintegration policy. Um, as well as your championing of the uh, rights of workers who are abroad and the importance of coming to better ways to enable people to work and to be protected while they're working abroad. And we want to appreciate your hosting of the Rohingyas um, and your openness to third country resettlement of that um, very, very vulnerable population, recognizing that we do need responsibility sharing in order to manage that, that situation. To Peru, um, I'll say it here, but also here, um, we really commend your efforts um, to expand regular migration pathways, to recognize the tremendous um, support that the government of Peru has provided to persons um, who have been uh, displaced migrants and refugees, including from Venezuela, um, to congratulate Peru as a champion country of the GCM, and to say that I'm very much looking forward to my visit there next week. So thank you for your hospitality for me personally. Um, to Malawi, I'd like to congratulate um, the work that the government of Malawi has done, especially around border management and in leadership, your leadership in responding to natural disasters, and most recently with regard to your response to um, Hurricane or to Cyclone Freddy. We know that the, your work doing the rapid re assessments of the communities that were most impacted was absolutely essential to making sure that the United Nations community and other humanitarian partners could very quickly get support to people in need. And finally, I'd like to thank you for your work to counter the trafficking of persons. Um, and we've really seen uh, that, that impact that that can have, especially for vulnerable migrants. Mm -hmm. To Norway, First of all, thank you so much for coming all the way from Capitol here to Geneva for this conversation. Um, you have been a tremendous partner financially, um, leading especially on issues involving climate impact on vulnerable uh, populations and ensuring that we are bringing a sustainable approach even to our own interventions as humanitarian actors. So thank you for your generosity in um, supporting us through personnel, supporting us through financial resources, supporting us through innovations. And we are absolutely committed to working with you across the range of work, whether it's in the humanitarian side on development, or of course support to persons who are um, voluntar voluntarily returning home. This is a partnership that has lasted for over two decades, and um, we look forward to, to continuing and building on it. Um, to Ghana, the, the government of Ghana has really um, been a champion on a whole range of issues, and I want to say thank you for the work you're doing right now to host the first informal dialogue of the Global Compact for Migration 27 champion countries. Um, you have uh, really led on this effort. You've led on the engagement of the funding and the use of the multi-partner trust fund. Um, you are... Uh, launching your own policies, whether it's the national migration policy, um, the national labor migration policy, or the diaspora policy, which I know will, will be coming out very, very soon. So thank you very much. To South Sudan, I would just acknowledge the tremendous um, challenges that are, that are faced because of the impact of climate change on extremely vulnerable communities. As you said, I saw it firsthand. We saw communities that have been displaced already um, by conflict then face increasing pressures as a result of drought, then as a result of flooding. And the country, the situation that we see in your country that you continue to build awareness around is part of 
and why we are advocating so much for that to be at the center of our policies, because we see the devastating impact that climate will have on communities that are already vulnerable. So I want to highlight our continued commitment to working with you um, and including um, as we see increasing returns from Sudan given the conflict there. Um, and we anticipate the humanitarian situation there will only become more complicated. So uh, it's a situation where again we need the support of the international community, but IOM stands ready to continue to provide capacity support to those who are most in need. And finally, Colombia, um, a country that has been a long, long standing partner of IOM, our biggest mission in the Americas, um, where we have worked with you on a range of issues, including support to displaced populations, but over the last several years, support to um, migrants and refugees from Venezuela. Our work in Colombia demonstrates the importance of our partnership with other UN agencies, including UNHCR. Um, and I want to also acknowledge what you are doing to um, create more safe, regular pathways for persons as part of the SMO, the Safe Mobility Offices Initiative that um, multiple countries are working on. So thank you for that. And finally, I just thank you for your work you're doing to bring the issue of climate change on human mobility to the forefront and your leadership on that issue um, just recently, the 7th to 8th of November, um, earlier this month, um, gathering 27 countries together to, to really take note, but also to take action. So that's tremendous. And I have to say, um, the interpreters have stayed through that all, and I am so, so sorry, because I went extra fast um, to, to um, get people out for lunch. So thank you to the interpreters. We're grateful for your work. We know you're working hard, and we know everyone in the room is now ready for lunch. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much, Amy. Always admiring your skills for bringing us substantial and brief uh, um, comments about uh, our debates this morning. And uh, thanks to you all. Uh, I wish to thank the delegation for their statement. We will resume the general debate this afternoon at 3 p.m. Please allow me also to remind that the IOM side event, Migration is About People, Migration Governance Indicators, Stories of Policy Impacts, will take place in this room at 1.30 p.m. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes, muchas gracias a nombre del Perú por el apoyo para esta vicepresidencia. Muchas gracias.